Hi! I'm addicted to Mario sound font covers. <laughs> it lets me play DMCA music, but it doesn't have to be DMCA. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's YouTube night. Yeah! It's not DMCA. I better not get in trouble for this. If I get in trouble for this, I'm going to be so mad. It's a movie night. Hello, little cone man. What do you mean, little? You could have just said cone man. You didn't need to add that part in. I don't like that. I wish you didn't say that. 100k followers. Yeah, now it's for real. We're at 100k 29. So now we're... It's a little bit better. Thank God. How tall are you? I've explained this thousands of times. I've already told you. If you don't know by now, I'm not going to put it back in your ear because it's not going to stay there. It's annoying. Uh, by the way, a big shout outs to Factor. They didn't sponsor today. Oh, I did look short here. Wait a minute. I moved the camera up. That's why you're asking. Because I was like down here, right? <laughs> I look like a child. I look like a baby down here. I'm 5'9". That's your slinking posture? Hell yeah, it is. Oh, thank you, Calvin. Did you get in trouble with the subclaim thingy? No, I'm trying something new. I just changed it up. I might go back to it. We'll see. This does look very small. <laughs> I, I don't like this. I feel like I don't belong here. I hate... uh sitting next to Mal at like a booth at a restaurant because I have longer legs and a shorter torso so when I sit at like a restaurant I, I just look so much smaller she's two inches smaller than me she's five seven but when we sit at a restaurant it, she looks taller and it's embarrassing to me I want to be the big guy Coney is sitting on a booster seat. I should one day. <laughs> I should come in a stream, and I'm sitting, and I'm just up here. Hey, guys. <laughs> that would be very funny. Do you have any... Pl I just realized that the big guy command is now <laughs> different. Because the doc emo. That's, uh... That's funny. Do you have any plans to play Omega Strikers on stream? No. None. Unless they pay me. If they pay me, anything is possible. This just sounds like a real song in the game. This doesn't even sound fake. One minute ago on Watch Mojo. What the fuck? Oh, never mind. It got updated. Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Dude, I, I tried to click on it and it... Did they take it down? Look what's in my recommended. What the fuck? One minute ago, and I went to their page. It's not here. I did click on top 10 AI generated songs. You wanna know what's number one? Check it out. Make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, world is mine. <laughs> Supercell featuring Hatsune Miku. Does that count? Remember I mean, I guess it does. Is she AI? I don't know if she's AI well, or vocal. I don't think that counts, Hatsune right? Miku. The artificial ambassador of synthesizer program Vocaloid. Have you heard of Hatsune Miku? 
And now, the live performance. She's a robot. She's not a robot. <laughs> She's a Vocaloid. Do not associate the goddess with the modern AI shit. Goddess? <laughs> Are you parasocial for Hatsune Miku? I guess she is a robot, like in the lore, right? Remember when we thought hologram resurrection concerts were going to be a big thing? We? Did we think that? I hate this song. This song's pissing me off. <laughs> Radiohead. After the Tupac Coachella. I remember people being very against that, actually. With the Tupac Coachella, people got really upset about it. They were like, that's weird, and I agreed. Hold on, let me get the YouTube video that we're... <laughs> it's not the only YouTube video we're watching tonight. But uh, it's, it's definitely one of them. So... I didn't know this was a full video. I I just saw like a clip from this video once. Hold on. And I thought that I thought it wasn't that funny. But I then I realized it's it's 10 minutes long. So I might as well just watch the whole thing. <laughs> And I hope that uh, the YouTuber doesn't get mad at me for doing it. Um, it's the it's the old country buffet training video. Do you guys know this one <laughs> with the Carver? Yeah, I didn't know there was a whole video. I thought I just know about the one moment in it. Yeah. Please watch. Never seen it. Oh, we're going to watch it. Coney looks like Teletubby's son right now. <laughs> what does... Why not just one of the Teletubbies? I'm just... I'm wearing... I... It says drugstore. Does that... Does that help at all? I guess not. That sounds like paraphernalia. Why not... Lala is the yellow Teletubby. I knew that. Don't try to correct me. I searched Lala and I got a singer. Lala, see? <laughs> what do you... I'm not a nerd. I had a little sister who was really into te Teletubbies. She loved Teletubbies. By the way, boost it, boost it, boost it, boost it, boost it, boost it. Kick it up, kick it up, kick it up. Hit this, hit this, hit this. She loved Poe. Poe was her favorite by a lot. Yeah. Teletubbies adult? Can't get enough of them. Yeah, love the tubbies. Sure. Tub friends are so mad. Are you doing a bit where you switch the background music to AI-generated songs that you would notice, but you wouldn't say anything? No, this is Mario sound font covers, and this is Radiohead, but I don't know this song. No. Super Peter 64. Pisses me off. <laughs> I thought this playlist was actual covers. Like real songs, but no, it's just video game shit. I gotta make my own thing, because it's all nerd shit. <laughs> this is pissing me off. I search for it and I it, there's like nothing good. These, the, there's the entirety of Nirvana's Nevermind, I think. Which I guess is better. I don't know. That's not what this is. I'm gonna make a playlist on my own. Nevermind Mario 64's best one? Mario 64 sound font. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is very dumb. This is so stupid.
in the court of the Crimson King. There's a million of these things. Uh, Abbey Road. What, the whole thing? Oh my god, it's the whole album. Yeah, no, this pisses me off. I don't like these anymore. Because it's all like nerd shit. I want like real songs. Like David Bowie. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh... Add in 12 seconds, you know how we do. We don't skip the first one. No snoozies here. In just a bit, we're going to be taking a look at the Old Country Buffet training video. What will he say to these, this young patron who's coming here for, I assume, carved roast beef? He could say anything. You're going to miss it if you don't subscribe. Drop a Prime War Tier 1. Honey, this hot mick moment happened five minutes ago later. Okay. I'm a little anxious. <laughs> Honey, this isn't a Pokemon, but I need to know if you think he's cool. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, okay. One at a time. Oh, God. What are they going to say on the hot mic? I'm not going to get banned, am I? I did not talk about my Star Wars doppelganger yet, no. Hold on. Please let this be safe for stream, for the love of God. I don't know what he's saying, but I can hear the cuss words. I can hear cursing. I don't know, like, I hear the cadence. You know what I mean? It's like a sim. Like, I know what he's trying to say, even if I don't know every word. I know how he feels about it. Go beat the shit out of him? Is that what he's saying? Don't touch me? Don't fucking touch me? Hockey refs are unhinged. You have to be. I feel like if you ref hockey, you have to appear big and strong. That shit's like prison. You're in the box with uh, people that will definitely hurt you. Because they can just run into you and be like, oops. I, I don't know. I would be very... Uh, I'd be a, an unhinged ref if I was on the court. Ice. Pitch. Field. Ice. Rank. There you go. If I was a ref, the refs would get sent off every game. Just keep doing this over and over. <laughs> uh, what was this other one? Uh, what do I think about this Pokemon? It's not a Pokemon. It's a yokai. <laughs> Count Zapaway. Wait, so the cloak isn't on him? He has to hold it? He has to, like, do this. I love him. Yeah, I guess he has no shoulders. Yeah, so he used to do that the whole time. Don't like him. I don't like that. Not into it. Um, oh my god, this guy has a long career. Why is Yokai Watch not popular? Is it popular? It's weird that Nintendo tried to do Pokemon again. <laughs> like, they forgot they had it. They're like, oh. Well, one day Pokemon might die, so we need to make another Pokemon for later. Oh, did somebody sign up for Factor? It gets some delicious meals, 50% off their... No, it was just the animation that plays. Son of a bitch. I thought we got one. I'll tell you about it later. It was popular for a bit, then burnt out. Okay. Look how much Yokai Watch 3 is. Uh, what, on eBay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I looked this up and I want you to read this the way that I did okay I was like okay Yokai Watch for the DS oh fourteen thirty nine. not bad but that's not Yokai Watch 3 Yokai Watch 3 Tempura with Dream Metal oh $28 but that's in Japanese I wonder how much it is in English Oh, that's different. Didn't expect that. 
By the way, Yokai, Yokai Watch 1 is only 30. What happened there? Did people, like, catch on by 3? They were like, oh my god, this game rules. Worst part is, there's definitely going to be a buyer. Dude, I've been looking for... So, one of my favorite bands... Is Soul Coughing. Uh, at least they used to be. They, they were very impactful on my life. And I've been trying to get these fucking shirts, and they're impossible to find. All this shit is... Uh, it, it's like $200 in XL and sold eight years ago. Like, I can't find anything. And everybody's like, oh, you could just put it on Redbubble. And it's like, yeah, I guess. But then it's like, I don't... I don't... I, like, I love this. Right? Man? <laughs> this song... <laughs> Don't red bubble it. That's whack. That's what I'm saying. But this shit's XL, man. I just want one of these. Fucking love this band. These sound fonts. So it's not gonna DMCA me. I'll be okay. Three had a limited run of copies compared to past games. Was it not popular by that point? Did Nintendo like kind of pull out? What do you think about this Pokemon? Drag Drag Opinion? Oh, I see. I was like, wait, is that the name? Dragalgi. Don't like that. That's ugly. It's like coral, right? What is it? It's like leaves. Dragalgi. Dual type poison dragon Pokemon. Kony, look up Gengar. No. <laughs> I know what Gengar looks like. I can guess. I can picture him in my mind's eye. Which is weird, because I don't think I can do that for, like, an apple. You guys ever see those images? That's like, check this out. You guys are out of ads, right? Okay. I, I would like to get some uh, unpleasantness out of the way before we get started. And uh, I, I don't know how to... I don't know how to, how to talk about it. And I think you guys probably saw it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't... I don't have anything to add except it fucking sucks. And I was anxious all day. Uh, yeah, the Wadi shit. Uh, if you guys weren't on Twitter, I thought there was going to be an average. No, I'm serious. And I know it's hard to tell because I usually fuck around. Um, yeah, some Wadi shit came out and he deactivated. And uh, what happened? Oh, my God. I don't want to say because I'm going to fuck it up. And I'm, I've been anxious all day. Like I, I saw it when I woke up today and I just laid in bed for like three extra hours. I got fucked up today. <laughs> Genuinely, like really bad. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to talk about it cause I don't want to misrepresent anything or say anything wrong or whatever. Um, I'm just, I'm very sorry for the people that got hurt. And, uh, I, I, Fucking, I, I feel the reason that I bring it up is because I feel like people will come into the chat and be like, "Hey, did you see this? Like, I didn't. Did you hear about this? Like, obviously I did, and it fucking sucks, and I don't have anything else to add or say. It, not to make, I'm not, and and I don't like talking about it because I don't like making it about me. Right, the victim should be the focus. They are the people that got hurt, but it just opens up old wounds for me, and I'm like, fuck, man, like. I don't know. It's awful. What happened? It, <laughs> it's it 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 it's it's a it's a thing that transpired over the past few days. Um, there were allegations from somebody who had a, a short-lived relationship with Wadi, and Wadi denied the allegations. And then a, another party stepped in and said, "These are my experiences." And what it comes down to is like. In these sort of circumstances, usually what happens is, um, I, and, and I don't know why you would deny allegations if other people have stories, right? Like, this continually happens where it's, like, clearly a pattern of behavior. It's multiple people. So it's weird to, like, continually, I, I don't know. You can't play whack-a-mole with that shit, right? Like, obviously, if you've hurt enough people... Um, do you think Smash events should become 18 plus? I think we should have uh, separated brackets. I've thought that for a while. Um, but that said, that's only really enforceable at the major level. 
Uh, at the local level, which is, I think, where probably most of this stuff happens, unfortunately. I don't, like, there are just local committees that I think have to step in, unfortunately. So, my locals can barely support one bracket. Yeah, and what happens if, like, you have, like, three people in an under-18 bracket at a local? It's like, uh eh. But at majors, absolutely. I've, I've thought that for a while, that you should have... And, and everybody's like, oh, well, why should, you know, a young player get punished by not playing with the top players? Well, it, it, they're, they're not really. I mean, they can continually continue to play in that bracket. And then d d it becomes like, oh, well, next year they're in the real bracket. They're playing the real play. I think there's a way to do it. And Pokemon has done it really well. Um, that's what I would like to see, but that's just me. So. Please encourage people to do their own research and be sympathetic. That's probably the best course of action. Yeah, if I'm being honest, dude, I don't feel comfortable doing this because this isn't my fucking... I didn't go to school for this. I don't know how to handle these situations. I'm just fucking sad. Um, but again, I don't like talking about it because it's not about me. I just don't like... What the fuck, right? Like, how... Uh, I don't know. But I wanted to talk about it because I feel like people will come in and be like, hey, did you see this? Did you hear about this? And I would like to get that out of the way just so I've, I've addressed it and I've talked about it. Um, people probably will do it. Please don't be mean to those people. Just like, uh, you know, just try to have some compassion because I think people are looking for guidance and answers right now. And I get it. Right. But I'm not the guy to give guidance and answers because I'm, I'm a guy who plays video games on the Internet. You get what I'm saying? So anyway, sorry for killing the vibe i just uh i i i thought i should talk about it yeah. you didn't have to give me money you didn't have to do that why did you thank you oak trees man for 45 dollars for thank you you didn't have to do that but thank you what bothers me is that it keeps happening yeah dude like i just don't like like, just when you think, you're like, okay, I know who to, it, it, like, I can trust people now, right? Hopefully I can trust people, and, and we're, we're done, we're good, things are good. It's fucking, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's fucked up. Like I said, I've been, I've been anxious all day. I've been really fucked up. I was, like, really, poorly timed dodo, I'm sorry, it's okay, it's not you, it's okay. I was really fucked up. Why is this uniquely a Smash problem? It's not. It's just you don't hear about it in other scenes as much because um, of the dynamics there. I think in Smash it's particularly relevant because of, like, demographics, right? It's not just a Smash thing, though. It's just this is the scene you're most tuned into, so. Also more young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like, Smash is unfortunately in a position where it's like that. And I think J-Dog had a tweet, and, and I don't want to talk about this too much, guys. Um, sincerely. Uh, J-Dog had a tweet that I really liked, which is, like, I, I shouldn't keep talking about this. Boys Club problem? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop. Anyway, go look at J-Dog's tweet. I really like J-Dog. J-Dog is a licensed therapist. Him and I have talked a lot. And he basically said that, like, it's... It, you you really should have extended the consistent conversations with people in the scene before you can trust them. Because otherwise, it just... It, it, like, esports in general is a breeding ground for this kind of shit, unfortunately. And... Ours in particular, obviously, is a little bit more prone because of that, so. I come from the Destiny community, and it happens all the time there. Uh, so when you said Destiny community, I thought you meant, like, the streamer. <laughs> I was like, uh, really? <laughs> is that true? That's one guy. What happened over there? But now I see it, it's the game. It's the game. That's different. That's different. Because I saw Destiny commented on the, the Wadi shit, and I'm like, uh-oh. He's getting involved. Good lord. So, anyway, I hope you guys understand. I, I like, I try to be silly, and, and I like to have fun on stream, but, like, I hope you guys understand. I try to be as truthful and as honest as possible. When I talk about this shit, I just, like, this shit's important, and it's serious. Um... And uh, I don't really know how to address it because I'm not trained to do it. So, sincerely, thank you guys for uh, bearing with me on this shit. Um, uh, I'm I'm just sad, just like everybody else is. So I'm trying to move past it. I'm just trying to talk through, talk it through. So <sighs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Okay, sorry about this. Somebody sent me a. Uh, <laughs> 
A seven TV. Hold on. To palate cleanse. An emote. Lighten the mood with this. <laughs> no, man. Why is it always this? People already said plink. People were already saying plink. <laughs> I, I'm never going to add Plink. Cody, if you take the white soul coughing t-shirt to a dry cleaner, you can get that stayed out. It's not that. I need one in a large. And they're all sold. And I would pay money, dude. But I don't know. It's tough. Okay, I've got a lot of people who subbed, so I'm sorry. Honky toe. Oh, oh, my God. Point close. That's a that's close to a streamer's name. Honky Toad, Toilet 64, Looter Shooter, da Dam was taken, Dam was taken, Tof Love, L.A. Chero, Night Brock, Galegal, P.K. Kirby, Huckle So, uh, Night Sean, Court Dove, Top Hat Matt, good God, there's 10 more. Remcaro, well, it's just one, because one guy. Thank you, Ecopter, for the 10 gifties. Remcaro, Inglor, Congo Bongo, Stellar Cosmos, Lav Liam, Ungabunga Inc., Shup, Dr. Mushrooms, Abilene, Flaming Oranges, Sisalol, Okie Doki. Nanone, X Senpai, TransUnion, Sad Toad, INO, uh, Kylex, Someone, LOL, Cast, Gnomus, Super Genius IQ, fuck me, Dalton, Bobo the Chimp, Shuby, Drummer, that's all. Stop! Stop gifting! Thank you, YU, for the five gifties. Thank you, Dr. Ill. Thank you, Comrade Shh. Thank you, Blue Tux, for the five gifties. Thank you, Stoop to Goop. No more gifts. If you want to give me a gift, give me what? Here's five dollars, Link. Okay, Plink fan three thousand. You think it's gonna? You think you could get? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, you think you could get Plink turned on for five bucks? It's gonna be more than that. But I'll add this. Honestly, pig motes are in. Piggy motes are in. Cat emotes are out. We're hot or nodding. <laughs> I hate this song so much. Hey, did you guys see the... the <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this tweet does not involve me, but I thought it was very funny. My dreams have a weird special feature that I like to call emergency Markiplier, where if I'm stuck in a horror situation, Markiplier's face cam will appear in the corner and he'll start controlling my body like he's Let's Playing me. That's fantastic. <laughs> what a defense mechanism. That's really good. Just if you're too scared, it's like, it's just a game. And I'm not even playing the game. You're not even in control of your own body. You're not even playing the game. Markiplier is. It's out of your control at that point, right? <laughs> One of these days, I hope Coney will add my Gluto. No. Not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. Did you see that Japanese tournament where Banjo got ninth? Dude, I heard he got he beat uh Mutes. And part of me was like, Oh, this goes crazy. I heard that he beat Mutes, and part of me was like, huh, because here is the thing, right? I've never lost to a Peach in bracket, and I think it's because PM Wario had very good like burst on the ground and he could like jump and get out of the way and I wonder if Peach just loses to that because Banjo has like side B and Banjo has the same shit that PM War not obviously not the same but like I wonder does that shit just beat Peach right like burst jumping aerials big burst damage because like she can't like float here right I haven't watched the set I'm just I'm considering yeah 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 most intelligent Coney matchup analysis. Uh, Peach Float, Wario Run. Who win? Who's strong? Surely Coney will add Robot next stride. For what? So, nah. emojis are out? Or I don't like it, but sure. Go to emojis? Did I say emojis? Emotes? No, 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 no. How many people have this added? These people are sinful. What? Thank you, Oak Trees, man. That's another 30. You didn't have to do that. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thanks for being so rad. Less than three more lighthearted. I've been watching a bunch of old AJPW recently and thought chat might like watching Stan Hansen ice a bunch of people for five minutes if you want to watch at some point, lol. 
Well, maybe. I gotta watch this old country, uh, old country buffet video soon. Because otherwise, people are gonna be mad at me for clickbaiting. Did you guys see? It? What? You got hit with a hurricane short clip. We're talking about a lot of fucking. Th All right, show me. Hold on. Yep. Nice. Wait. That shouldn't... I guess it's a mix-up. Like, I guess if she's up being into the umbrella, that didn't... It shouldn't always win. No, it's true. Yeah, but I'm saying, can she hug stage? Like, obviously that's true. I'm saying, can she hug stage to not get hit by that? Or is this just a bad matchup? No. So this is a stage thing, right? She could ride the wall up. Wait. Oh, not at this point, though. No, he's too low. He can't, actually. No, he's too low. He can't do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't have jump. He doesn't have float. Huh. I miss doing this for Panda videos. I used to, like, analyze it. I'd be like, we definitely would have made a banjo a video. This banjo went crazy in Japan? And I would have looked at this, right? Because, like, could he have... He's hit by that. This is where you side B. Side B wins here. I think it gets out before bomb. Unless it doesn't. Maybe grenade hits it. That's just a matchup check. Yeah, I think so. Uh, could she have thrown a turn up at the bomb then up B? Probably not. Because then she'd be too low. Because the frames are throwing it up. That'd be my guess. While you're on the VOD, go to 445.21. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dogepie. Wait, did he just, he just killed Kazooie? Die! Oh, it hit the egg. Never mind, Kazooie's okay. That's the wrong stream? This character fucking sucks! 20 years for this dumbass character. So dumb. 20 years for him and he's hard and bad. <laughs> Dash tag at 150, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Yahoo! <laughs> oh my god. Ow, what the f Holy shit. I didn't know they popped off like that in Japan. This looks like it would hurt. I guess it's carpet. Dude, that chair back goes far. Thank God for that. That joint is flexible. <laughs> oh, that's good. It was game five, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop-offs are universal, man. Pop-offs are amazing. I love those. Pop-offs are just the, the, the release of tension. It's just, oh, thank God. Irreverse 3-0? Oh, Jesus. Okay. He earned it. You know what I earned? <laughs> Hold up, bro. Bro, I was so right. There's actually some footage of me at uh, Return of the Jedi back in 1983. I don't know if you guys saw this. I actually attended opening night of Return of the Jedi in 1983. And I, I just gotta say, I called it. I got that shit right. <laughs> I knew how it would end. fanatics out here waiting on Return of the Jedi. Three years in the making, we were waiting for this. Some people don't idolize Darth Vader like I do. See, I want him to get Luke. And uh, I think that, uh, that that Luke will destroy Darth Vader. And I, guess that and I was right, too. I told you he would destroy Darth Vader. And he fucking did. He beat his ass. I think that uh, Luke will destroy Darth Vader. Truer words have never been spoken. He literally doesn't. D does He does, though, right? <laughs> does he not do that? How old were you? Well, this was 1983, so I was probably like 31, 32. 
My birthday's in September, so it would depend on when it released. Something like that. Darth Vader will die. I'm not sure. I hope he doesn't. I love his black. Everybody loves Darth Vader here. Not me, though. <laughs> I think Luke will destroy Darth Vader. And uh, I think that, uh, that that Luke will destroy Darth Vader. They were definitely laughing at him, by the way. I think they were laughing at him. <laughs> he said something incredibly corny, and they edited it out. And uh, I think that... He's so uncomfortable here. He's embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed here. <laughs> This guy looks tall, though. No, people were just way shorter back then. Back then, I was uh, a god among men. I was a titan back then. Truly. The hero will beat the villain. Ah, yes. See? Told you. Never knew you were in your 70s? Yeah, I hide it well. A lot of makeup and cream, you know? Okay. I've clickbaited long enough. Everyone behold. <laughs> We have so many movies tonight. But first... <laughs> I've been re-watching the Samir Bhavnani streams. I forgot how funny those were. They really were. The problem with Samir is that he is so inconsistent. It's either the funniest thing you've ever seen or just 10 minutes of like, oh, moving along. Right? You just get bored. It's tough. So I just, I try to keep it, you know. I, I haven't popped it in a while, but maybe one day. It's time for the Old Country Buffet training video. What is that carver up to? Your other shift duties. We'll begin with your <laughs> second shift duty. So I've only seen one clip from this video. I didn't know it was a full-on video, but I'm very curious now because people linked it in the watch this in the Discord, and now I have to know what are my duties as a carver. Greeting and serving guests. Please. Good evening. Fried enough to eat today. Boy, I'll say. Well, that's great. Would you care he for some or beef? A little both, I think. He looks kind of tiny. <laughs> Why am I making? Does he look small? These are like weird proportions. Fried enough to eat today. Boy, I'll say. He looks sweaty, dude. Look at the lights. Anybody would be. Well, that's great. Would you care for some or beef? A little both, I think. All right. Making friendly conversations like this is a big part of greeting and serving guests. Sure. At other buffet-style restaurants, guests okay. often feel they're... What? I forget which door-like channel it was, but the girl with the dumb laser was legitimately the most I have oh, ever Oh, I think left. it was called Future something? What was it called? Future... Oh, God, I don't remember. Something Force? I don't remember. Z? It was Z. Something Z. Z Logic? Fuck, I don't remember, but yes. Where she could get make people stupid. Z TV? Was that it? I don't remember. Or on their own. Other buffet-style restaurants, guests often feel they're on their own. True, I got lost. <laughs> Once they've paid Where for the meal, go? no one pays much attention to them. Somebody at should be looking at me. Why is nobody talking to me? I'm all alone. Old Country Buffet, we work hard to Hell. make sure our guests never feel that way. As a carver, you spend a little more time with guests other team members. That means you have a great chance to make them feel welcome and appreciated. Mm, do that. By greeting the guest warmly and holding brief conversations as you serve them, you say to our guests, we're glad you're here. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at greeting guests. Okay. Every conversation you hold with guests should begin something like this. Good evening. Or, <laughs> hi, how are you? That's it. Only those two. I don't care if it's 11 a.m. Say good evening. Once you've greeted the guest, start a brief conversation. This guy's tiny. Is this woman big? The one guy, the one guy being big is one thing. Is this woman like 6'4"? What the fuck? Try asking a question. Little carving man. Answer in a sense or two. That's a tiny carver. You might ask something like this. Is it still hot out there? <laughs> or this. Did you catch a game last night? Why does he sound like that? Is he, he's on the verge of tears. He sounds like he's crying. He's an Oompa Loompa. You think they made him in the back? He's an Oompa Loompa. He's, he's a creation of Old Country Buffet. Or this. Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. 
Don't forget to hold quick conversations with our younger guests, too. Them, too? Children often play a big part in deciding which restaurant their parents visit. Ah, look at that. Wise. Wise video. That's smart. Mm. We want them to feel welcome oh, and ass. special okay. here, too. So start conversations with children by saying something like this. What grade are you in at school? Or this. <laughs> have you decided what dessert you're going to have? Or this. Do you like hot fudge sundaes? <laughs> Once you've held a brief conversation, it's time to move on to the second half of this shift duty, serving the guests. Begin by asking, what'd you get for some hammer beef? Ham what? Everything is an upward inflection, man. This guy's killing beef. me. Once guests have chosen what meat they want, you'll carve a slice of it. Somebody should be like, hey, man, are you, are you good? <laughs> Everything okay with you, dude? Are you all right? Exactly what size of it's slice all upper will serve intonation will be a judgment like, call on so your shaky. part, unless this makes a special request. Okay, that's crazy. Judgment call on your part, unless this makes a special request. That's your judgment call? Look at how thin that slice is! Dude, what kind of judgment call is that? He knew the, he knew the camera was filming him. He was like, no, 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 I gotta give a small portion. He did that to me, I would slam my plate across his head. It would break open. We don't limit the... I would be banned from the old country buffet. ...can have. We do, however, manage it to reduce waste. Here are some guidelines for That's knowing how better, much meat to serve a guest. When your guest's plate has very little on it, uh -huh. carve a full cut. Lay it over the bare portion of the plate. Children usually prefer smaller portions. Carve them a usually? smaller cut. Place it on I mean, an open they, section of the plate. They have smaller tummies. If your guest's plate looks like this, quarter cut or a half cut <laughs> of the meat the guest requests. Okay. Sometimes guests will tell you exactly what size of cut or number <laughs> of pieces they want. Give me the whole fucking thing. Other guests will ask you to carve a slight thicker than our usual dime width. These guests all feel they're getting more when getting a thicker cut. Actually, the thin cut ensures them a tender piece of meat, which is why we carve dime thicknesses. What? Actually, it's better to get less food. Is that true? Yeah, that's what I... Do I have any Old Country Buffet carvers? Do any of you work at Old Country Buffet? I bet one of y'all work at a buffet. There's a thousand people in here. Somebody in here has worked at a buffet. It's more chewy when thicker. Yeah, but it's not like... They said it was, like, more tender, right? Two thin ham slices over one thick ham slice. If a guest asks you... I like a half-inch slice of that roast beef, please. Say Break like out this. the ruler. I'd be glad to carve you that. Thinner slices are more tender, though. Would that be all right? <laughs> you can always come back up for more. Okay. Of course. Art of the deal. Art of the deal on that one. How about a thin slice? Riz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> w Riz Carver. <laughs> you passed the skill check. Well done. What if they say no? Kick them out. They're banned. If the guest insists... Please take the thinner slice. ...on a thicker slice, honor the request. No matter what the topic of your conversation has been or what size slice you've served, uh -huh. you will end each guest contact with the same phrase. How's that for you? That's fine, thanks. Asking mm -hmm. how's that makes sure guests are happy with the slice they received. If they are not, or if they also want a slice of a different meat, you can correct the situation promptly. What if they just keep going, though? What if guests they... will sometimes ask you questions about the food we serve and how we prepare it. Uh oh. To be ready for Quiz these time. questions, make the most of opportunities to learn about our menu items. If you are asked a question you can't answer, find someone who can answer it. The nearest manager is usually a good place to start. Your third shift duty is maintaining the carving station. As you carve and serve meats, your station. It's like asking the subway person to burn your sandwich. You do that, though, right? You toast it. You could just be like, hey, leave that in there a little bit, right? She quickly loses the clem. Do we have a mathematician on staff? I think you need, you need, you need a guy with a, with a ruler, right? One of those uh, with the measuring tape. Just bring that out for the quarter-inch cuts. ...and appeal it had when the restaurant opened. Throughout your shift, 
you will complete routine cleaning and maintenance tasks to return your station to its original appearance. Here are some of the Cut tasks you will complete. Cut the hand with a compass. Complete. I'm doing it with a protractor. Just Wipe grease from the carving board the with a paper towel. The hand, you know? Grease and meat scraps spoil the appearance of your station. But you gotta fix Wipe that. them away Clean frequently. Discard the used paper now. towels in the waste basket immediately. Keep okay. the waste basket in a spot that is then that exists <laughs> immediately. What? Keep the waste basket in a spot that is okay. It I guess it just it cut a little bit. Then <laughs> keep the waste basket in a spot that exists. Yeah, I'm way ahead of you. Way ahead of you. This waste basket is corporeal. And I the can touch and board, feel it. Front board and stainless. My cat walked into the recording studio. <laughs> The guy was like, if we keep the waste... Oh, pss, 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 pss. just a stray. Steel surfaces with a clean, <laughs> sanitized towel. And between groups of guests to wipe... What's another buffet place? The only place I can think of is Old Country Buffet. I feel stupid. I haven't been to Golden Corral. That's the other one. I can't think of many uh, buffet places. Chinese buffet? That's not like a... Uh, that's not a chain, is it? I thought Chinese buffet was like just a local thing. Cracker Barrel is not a buffet, dummy. CeCe's Pizza. I've never had CeCe's beef, uh, Pizza. Ruby Tuesdays. That's not a buffet. I thought they just had a salad bar, right? P.F. Chang's. That's not a buffet either, I don't think. I never had CeCe's. I just I, I saw their wacky pizzas. I'm like, I'm, I'm too grown for this. At my big age? You're carving. Mac and cheese on pizza? No thanks. Pepperoni, please. Hey, chat, when does Crink Confessional happen? I'm new to the stream. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we do it once a month, and it's usually on a Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, though. This Wednesday, I have something planned <laughs> with uh, with another streamer. I recommend you stop by. It'll be fun. It'll be a good time. I'm very excited for it. I'm not going to leak it. I'm not going to leak it. You'll see. Having knives and chef's forks with your clean, sanitized towel. Keep an eye on the walls, mirrors, sneeze guards, and floors around your station. And they got two people with those hats? Station to make sure they stay Everybody clean. Out in here, a if chef? they aren't, what the heck? use the time between guests to clean them. Or spills immediately by guarding nice the area That's stupid. personally or putting up a <laughs> wet floor really sign dumb. until the spill can be cleaned clean up. Clean it up! Damp mopping the area with hot, soapy water and leaving the wet floor line in place until the area is completely dry. This guy got to do everything. Be sure to wash your hands after performing every cleaning task. Carving, test. mopping, coning. Rinse out your towels frequently in sanitizing solution. He's got to rinse towels out his that towels aren't sanitized thoroughly frequently in sanitizing not solution? Not only are unappetizing to look at, but they also leave streaks on the stainless steel. Maintaining <laughs> the carving station includes maintaining carving knives. To keep your knives sharp that and ready to inspected. carve, you use a group. Okay, so you guys saw what I saw, right? I was I was actually monka essing. He's like holding it mad high. I was like, oh jeez. Okay, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't like that. This is some Sweeney Todd shit. I didn't like this. He is inve That's Krauser. He is investigating that shit. Any carving knives to keep your bro loves the word carve knives sharp and I love that carve. idea. You use a grooved steel rod called appropriately. The steel does <laughs> not. A what? Steel rod called appropriately. Oh. The steel. I'll never know what it's called. What is it called? We didn't have any carvers in here. It's lost. Lost the time and technology. That shit is gone. Steel does we'll actually never know. sharpen the knife. It hones it by aligning microscopic <laughs> burrs on the edge of the blade. After cutting about 10 to 15 it's slices of meat, slice. you will notice that your knife isn't cutting as easily as it was when it was well, first not. sharpened. A, a couple of them. It's then that you use the steel to restore the knife's edge. Here's how to use the steel. I fucking Note hate Note that the process durability. is described for right-handed carvers. If you are left-handed, reverse the process. Use the steel. Before you start, put a carver's <gasps> protective glove on each hand. That's so metal, dude. I love that shit. Left-handed carvers, get the fuck out of here. I've been saying that. If a guy carves with his left hand at the Old Country Buffet, he's a mimic. Don't eat it. Hold the steel in your left hand. Hold it gets very tricky with that mirror behind him, too. Be careful. So the point is up. 
You will keep the steel's tip up throughout this process. <laughs> Hold the knife in your right hand. This is about the dual wield. Place the blade of the knife at the base of the steel on the side furthest from it. <laughs> L. <laughs> the cutting edge should be facing up. Okay. Blade up the steel, working left to right. Oh, no Make way. sure the entire blade is drawn across the steel. Why bro smirking so hard? Because he's about to get a sheen off that blade, bro. He's going to cut so much ham with that Next, shit. blade of the knife Woo! at the tip of the steel on the side closest Chop to it. you. Again, the cutting edge should face up. Draw the blade down left to right. Ah. This hones the other side of the blade's cutting edge. Sure. Repeat this process several times on each side of the cutting edge. Draw the blade over the clean, sanitized towel lying on the carving counter. Is it? I don't think people do this. I feel like the guy uses the same knife the entire night and doesn't clean it once. Do not hold the towel in your left hand. I feel like I'm tasting, your like, if I get there at, like, 10 p.m., I'm eating, like, eight hours worth of ham. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the same knife that's cut through so many different pigs. Your carving knives are sharp enough to slice not only through the towel, but all fingers. No fucking way. Damn, this cut's whack. Oh, well. That, guy, that shit can't go through a towel. Remember, Is it a paper knives towel? are never taken to the dish room for cleaning. Once you have wiped that the seal with not your that clean, sharp. sanitized towel, return it to its appropriate place. Your fourth ship. I feel like there was probably a guy like this in Dead Rising that was a psychopath. Am I right? There's probably like a Chef Carver guy, right? Yes. If duty is a. I fucking knew it. I j I get it. I get the vibe, right? You know what I mean. When the guest flow is light, when there are no guests at your station and you're caught up on your own tasks, you'll assist line attendants. Oh, I hate that shit. You're you got to do other people's work. That is the worst part of working in a restaurant. Time to lean, time to clean. Shut the fuck up. I'm the carver. I don't, that's not my job. Final shift Hate duty that. is keep busy. Oh my God. Doing whatever it takes to take care of the guests. What does that mean? At old do anything. Scoop the green beans for them. Country. I was not a bus boy. I was a waiter. And I got told to do the fucking everything. I had to clean out the, uh, the, di the, the food, the, 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 the carriers. What are those things called? The plastic things in the back. I worked at a Bob Evans. Don't act up. <laughs> Stop acting up. Not at the Old Country Buffet. That's Golden Corral talk. The tubs, yeah. Had to do the tubs. I got in a lot of trouble, actually. So I worked at a Bob Evans, right? Uh, and and I, you're allowed to. You're not allowed to get free food. You have to comp it, and you get like 50% off or something. But I would do what I would do is I would take a water cup and I'd put soup in that shit, and I would drink the chicken noodle soup. Oh, it was delicious. It was so good. Just <laughs> love it. It was so good. So weird. Give the employees food. Well, th the guys in the back were cool as shit. They would usually cook something up for us, but the manager couldn't see it. And I feel like the manager didn't care either, but they had to pretend to care because it's in their job to care. You know what I'm saying? Hey, serving guests is our number one priority. You have what many opportunities. Smell like chicken noodle soup. Your shift. It's a good, a I, honestly, with Bob Evans, with the rest of the odors that are in there, I think chicken noodle soup is an upgrade. Lend a helping hand to our guests. Every time you offer that helping hand, chances are you increase guests' satisfaction with his or her visit. Before we leave your shift duties, let's take a minute or two to look closely at something you need to be aware of every minute you're on the job. Every minute? Safety. Oh, yeah. Okay. As a carver, yeah. you work in an area with a high potential for Ooh, accidents. Yeah. Sharp knives, grease from the hand. Oh, yeah. And the rush of a busy shift can sometimes combine to create a disaster. A disaster? <laughs> what does that look like? A disaster at the Old Country Buffet? What's the worst thing that's happened at the Old Country Buffet? That's why it can't you be need that to bad, right? always work safely. You get a hungry person who can't stop himself, won't go to the back of the line. Here are a few things. You think homicide? You think people have died at an old country buffet? I feel like it's probably not a location for that, right? Things to keep in mind. Nobody goes there. Treat your knives with... Re oh, old people go there. That's not homicide, though. 
Former dishwasher convicted murder. Yeah, that's that, that probably didn't happen at the Old Country Buffet. There's probably a dishwasher there. Respect. They are razor sharp, honed to an edge that cuts through meat with only a little pressure. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter to the knife if it's cutting through a ham or your finger. Ah! Don't grab for a falling knife. Let it hit the floor. Oh my God! Why does you like that? In your haste to prevent it from falling, why does the knife not You care? stand a 50-50 chance of grabbing the blade, not the handle. Take extra time and care when you're washing knives. When both your hands and the knives are wet, it's easy to slip if you're hurrying. Slow down and complete the take job safely. Take it easy. Never place knives in. Yeah, I was gonna say you're not supposed to take it to the dish room, and they said that. But he had to make a, he had to make a boss call. Had to make an executive decision. I'm taking this shit to the washroom. I don't care who stops me. He probably works in here now. He fucked up too many times. He's probably dropping that knife so much now. He works in the back. He just won't give up the hat. Bus tubs, Lexans, or sinks full of soapy water. Use only sharp knives. Fred, believe it or not, is that a picture of like a squirrel? Let's go. Dull knives are more dangerous than that. Sink is huge. Lexans. Have you never been to the back of a restaurant? That's normal, dude. It's miserable. There are so many plates. It's so fucked up. I work in one, not mine. We well, are in Scotland. What's your fucking occup your your population is like what a hundred thousand maybe? At a tiny little place, you probably work in a pub. Hands or sinks full of soapy water. Scottish people eat a lot, to be fair. Yeah, but you don't. It's a small amount of people. Five million, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> Tiny country. Ho, 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 ho. Me, 300 million, I think. Hold on. American population. Ho, ho, ho. Me gain 332 million. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Scatatona ta tiny. Ho, ho, ho. Damn, we kind of mog Russia. I didn't know. Damn, their number go down? Oh, for a little bit. Must have been that famine. What happened in Russia? <laughs> Rip Bozo? <laughs> Do not ask what happened in Russia in the year 2009. All right, numbers going back up. Where did all the able-bodied men go? <laughs> it is a mystery, yeah. I want to explore more. Now I'm curious. Oh, not like this. Damn, what's going on with our population growth? Wasn't there like a wasn't there like a theory that there there was that anime, the Spy Family anime that was designed to to up Japanese birth rates? Is that true? What would we have for America for that, right? You guys don't know what we're talking about? Yeah, there's like a spy family anime of like two parents that like work for different spy. It's like it's like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith or Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Jones or whatever, like that movie with Brad Pitt and and uh, and and the fucking Angelina Jolie. But they have a daughter. They have a little girl. It's supposed to be oh, that's so cute. I, goals. I want that. Coney, that's not true. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's a conspiracy theory, and I'm wondering like in America, what's the we would surely like what what is our propaganda, right? probably be a Kardashian kind of like I don't know we had like teen mom and I feel like that probably fucked over population growth for a little bit people like me were like oh shit and we just didn't that looked awful that looked really bad I never want to have kids after that and then I did there's no future for babies born now no no L mine is mine's gonna have a great future <laughs> mine's different personally personally my baby is going to be a W. She's going to save the world. Coney, click this. Wait. Definitely Family Guy? You think Family Guy is the popular... Yeah, that was the one to be like, hey, don't you want a nice, full family life? Three kids, a dog, <laughs> a pervert neighbor. I can't click on the link. It won't work. Post it again. Coney, their kid is adopted, though. Oh, wait, really? Never mind. My bad. I didn't know that. 
You think I watched that? Click the link. Now there's a lot of links. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> That's not fun. In Boston, huh? It's always Boston. Coney, click this. <laughs> I'm not adding this. When would you use this? Why do three channels already use this? Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you three in here right now? I thought this was a ch uh, an emote built for me. You know what we're going to start doing? You guys keep adding these fucking, uh, these, these seven TV emotes. If they're bad, I'm going to tell you to call it. You have to call it. And then if you're wrong, I'm going to right in the forehead for the night. You come back tomorrow. Use only sharp knives. Believe it or That's not. That's being too generous. <laughs> Dull knives are more dangerous than sharp knives. Because you have to work harder to get a dull knife Wait a minute. Practice, then sh only sharp knives. Believe it or not, dull knives are more dangerous than sharp knives. Bullshit. They are. It's true. Correct. Shut the fuck up. A sharp knife will cut you. What is a dull knife going to do? Coney, no, it's true. It's not! Oh, Country Buffet Carvers in chat. And here we go. Now all the carvers are coming out. Here are all the carvers. They weren't here before, but now they are. These old Country Buffet lobbyists showing up. Backseat and carving. I told you the weapon degradation shit pissed me off. And now you're saying, oh, no, it's good to have a, a dull knife, actually. Because a dull you knife have will to work you, harder to get a dull knife to right. Hold on, wait. Cut us then sharp knives. Wait. Because you have to work harder to get a dull knife to cut, the chances of cutting yourself or a guest are much greater. Ah, so you add more force and then it might go further. Uh, it can slip. Yeah, but that shit wouldn't actually hurt you though cuz it's not sharp. It would just go like It'd be like a, like a kendo stick. It'd be like soft. Finally, be aware at all times... Just say oops. ...of where the guest's hands are. Without realizing it, guests may move their hands in the path of your knife. <laughs> gimme, 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 gimme! <laughs> this is really stupid. Hold on. This is really dumb. Imagine you're trying to carve somebody a piece of ham, right? <laughs> you go to give them the ham. Here's your slice. Give me that fucking piece. That's that's what'll happen to you. <laughs> Give me the whole thing. He's mad as hell. This is the carver. He's pissed. Yeah, I knew that if I said it's like the Jetsons intro, you guys wouldn't get it. So I had to actually pull it up. You guys wouldn't know what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> I had I had to actually get the bit, you know what I mean? Why'd she take all his money? Damn, she's out too, women. <laughs> Her ass got out without even talking. That's crazy. A wall. <laughs> Where is she going, fellas? Where is she going? Well, well, well. Keep an. I'm so mad we don't have flying cars, dude. Like straight up. Unironically, I'm I'm like kind of mad now. We were supposed to be like well past that. Eye out for this hotel. In this video, or knife. Keep an eye out for this hotel. Look out for hungry ass customers. If they're like salivating and their tongue is like spinning around their mouth and spit is going everywhere, just just d d d take some caution. In this Watch video, yourself. we've examined your shift duties. Other than car. George Jetson was born this year. You've got to be fucking kidding me. George Jetson birthday last year. <gasps> oh my God! He's almost one. We are so close to the future. We're all gonna make it. How old is he on the show? 
How old is George Jetson? 40. So we got 39 more years till flying cars. And probably like 30 until those big houses in the sky. We're going to make it. We're good. Carving meat. We're good. We're almost there. Your shift duties are the things you will spend the majority of your time doing. You're not Once making again. it, Coney. <laughs> call it. Call it right now. You have to call it. Nanophone. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Call it. Does this update? I need a message. Does it update? Where did they go? I don't think that updates. Call it. Heads? <laughs> Gone for an hour. I'll be here when you regain consciousness. <laughs> And here are the shift duties we've examined in this. Old Coney wouldn't even give him a chance. Yeah, well, now I'm an agent of fate. Oh, fuck. I forgot the snooze. Ads starting soon. You're not going to miss anything. We're going to watch something else in a second. There's seven seconds left. If you don't want to see ads, Prime or Tier 1. Sorry, I forgot. My bad, everybody. <laughs> My bad. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, I feel bad. I forgot the video segment. All right, you got it anyway. Greeting and serving guests. We did it. Now we can carve at the station. old country buffet. Dude, did you guys know that Bed Bath & Beyond is going out of business? Did you guys see that? Good? What do you mean good? I like having a Bed Bath & Beyond near me. Do you not? I think that shit's kind of cool. Not like I would ever go there, but I think the option is nice. <laughs> I don't know why I would go to there, go to that place instead of go to Amazon, because like you could just get everything returned anyway. It reminds you of luxury and decadence. I will say it does feel kind of, um, I don't know. There's something, uh, there is something luxurious about Bed Bath and Beyond, and I don't really know what it is. It feels different, right? Feels like an ivory tower thing. It's just white and sterile. Yeah, I guess. It's just this big ass building. It feels like the ceilings are so high up. <laughs> I don't know. You clean them. Wait, where did my where did my Mario sixty four things go? I'm gonna thank people in a second. Hold on. Dark side of the moon. Virtual insanity. Toxicity. Which one is toxicity? Oh, this is the whole thing. Wait a minute. How do I know the songs? Surely somebody... Nobody did it? Oh my god, this guy's just posting fucking lyrics. Songs? Prison song, Deer Dance, Chop Suey. <laughs> Pretty good. Good start. Uh, thank you, Aus, my friend. Thank you, Enrage Leaf. Thank you, Elvis Never Died. Thank you, It's 8888U. Thank you, Red Pecan. Thank you, Zoro Trees. Thank you, Mr. Dude. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Lazu. Thank you, Legend. Pudding Sloth, Rigid Pillow, Rafa, and everybody else. Ace has great. Thank you. Here it comes. Here comes the drop. <laughs> that did not hit as hard as I was hoping. I thought that would go crazy. I don't like that. I don't like whatever's happening there. Wait a minute. <laughs> Look what I did. I can't. That's not a shift duty. You guys want to see the new tier zoo? It has giraffes. Can we watch something with more food? <laughs> I have 
the worst teams in Hell's Kitchen history. That do anything for you? <laughs> Giraffes is only 10 minutes. I'm hungry now. I got noodles here. You could probably eat a giraffe. I feel like they're so lean. Like this, this giraffe thigh would be so hard, right? That shit would be tough. Do, do animals eat giraffes? Like lions? That shit can't taste good, right? Factor sec. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot. Yeah, guys, check out Factor. Oh, wait, people are still in heads. Oh, no, they're not. Guys, check out Factor. Exclamation point factor, and you can get 50% off of your first box from Factor. Ready-made meals delivered right to your house. Just pop them in the microwave. Perfect for your convenient, easy lifestyle. You're a gamer. You just want to eat. You don't care about cooking food or nutrition. But good thing these are nutritious. Phew, dodge that bullet. Go and check out Factor. Exclamation point factor in the chat to get 50% off your first box. I ate Factor and gained 50 pounds. What else did you... <laughs> What else did you do? Did you eat Factor and three pints of ice cream every evening? There are probably other environmental factors. I heard that people to put on weight for like movies and stuff, they'll drink pints of ice cream, they'll melt them, and they'll just Which is probably the most efficient way. That's pretty good. Or putting on a fat suit. Like Martin Lawrence. Yeah, it's definitely not Factor that did all that shit. Cody, can we change the music? This shit sucks. I agree, that was not good. <laughs> Look out! Dude, I thought, okay, so I said, do things really eat giraffes? And I know that's a stupid question, but, like, how are giraffes still around? Like, if, if a giraffe is a, a prey, height? Yeah, but no, because they're easy to take down, right? I feel like it'd be so easy to just grab onto one leg and just hug it, and then he stumbles. And if a giraffe falls, they're not getting back up. Adult giraffe kills a lion 1v1. Bullshit. What do they do? <laughs> they pick it up by its neck, like the, and then it just drops it? Can it not stand that fight? Watch the video. I'm gonna! This cat is cat jumping. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> All right, this cat is dead. That's a dumb cat. That well, You shouldn't jump in front of it. Die. Yeah. Oh, it did die. That kills? <laughs> it swings its head like a sledgehammer? No, it does. Well, does that get a lot of power if it goes, oh, boom? The Africa server is full of extremes. You've got the most powerful builds in the game including the largest terrestrial build in the entire game currently. Fuck elephants. But while the African bush... I'd be so mad if I lived in Africa and I saw an elephant. <laughs> I can't kill that shit. I'm so hungry, but I can't kill it. It may indeed right? be the largest. It isn't Think about all the food there, right? Like, let's say you're a lion and you're starving. You can't kill that shit. But if you do, though, <laughs> just eat grass? I can't. I throw it up. I'm a lion, and I need to eat something. And the only thing around is an elephant. You know how mad I would be? The tallest. That Wait for them to get diseased. I'm going to die first. Title goes to the subject of today's video, the giraffe. But Damn. is being the tallest build in the game actually that effective of a strategy? How does it play out in practice? And what abilities did the giraffe spec into in order to compound its innate advantages? Giraffe would definitely be a meme build. Like in a game... This is a, a the giraffe's meme. extreme height. This is me making my character in Street Fighter VI. Look how long his benefits. neck is. The first of these is how it completely <laughs> changes the dynamics regarding the game's stealth mechanics. So most top predators in the African savanna opt for the ambush strategy to get within striking range of their oh ow fuck ooh targets. They tend to rely on a combination of innate camouflage and use of natural cover to evade detection, while closing most of the innate camouflage and use of natural cover. His ass is not hiding. I see him. His ass does not know we see him. I see that shit. Yeah. There's a leopard in there, you guys. To evade detection while closing most of the distance, breaking from cover only at the last possible second okay, I, I when they could, believe they I can would close probably the get remaining distance there. before the target has a chance to react. 
This uh, strategy is anything. almost Never completely mind. useless against the giraffe, because the stealth benefit from natural cover, things like tall grass and bushes, is entirely negated when viewed from a high vantage point. While staying low to the I ground like may that. obscure your character from the perspective of something like a gazelle or zebra, to a giraffe you are completely exposed and your approach was seen coming from quite a ways off. The second main benefit Damn! Exposed. I didn't even Character see the, the lion there. Oh, perspective well. of something like a gazelle or zebra to a giraffe, you are completely exposed. Okay, well, it spawned. Never mind. And I thought it was in there the whole time. From quite a ways I was off. gonna say, damn, the I'm dead. The second main benefit granted to Get the him. giraffe via its height Get is him, a zebra. To its <laughs> Beat his ass. Because the giraffe's hurt box is elevated giraffe via its height. It Dude, kick the legs. What are you? Okay, so everybody's laughing at this zebra, right? LOL. He's not even kicking him. But if he kicked him here, he would fucking die. Right? Like, if the zebra kicked him in the shins, he would go the other way. Ah! No? You don't think so? It's like a goddamn ad at. That's what I'm saying. Like, a giraffe is so easy to kill. I could do it so quickly. The bonus to its defense. Just give me, give me a bike and a rope. I will kill that giraffe. Because the giraffe's hurt box is elevated significantly <laughs> off the ground. It's extremely difficult for most players oh! to land a hit on the giraffe's oh, never mind. vitals. Yeah, get the leg. In get the fact, leg. for literally every relevant threat in the African meta, landing a strike on the giraffe's weak point requires either a risky don't, don't jump strike in or head, an ambush dude. from an elevated position, neither of which are very efficient strategies, Yoop. with the jump strike in particular being easily punishable by any of the get giraffe's the leg, many dumbass. powerful counterattack options. Ooh, ooh. Speaking of, let's take a look at what those are. The giraffe's reach not only keeps its own vitals out of attack range, but also makes it very easy for a giraffe main to land their own attacks. Similar to horses and zebras, All right, so the I, guess, I guess I was wrong about lions. I thought lions would fuck a giraffe up. My bad. Main method of attacking is his ass isn't even looking. It's kick, dealing moderate damage to any target. Oh my god! The giraffe's main method of attacking is its. I want a fucking African Savannah Souls game. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Man. You can put souls on anything, man, and it's good. Right? This again. Shut up! <laughs> and a bug one. I said bug one before. What would you play as, right? Maybe like a hyena. It would have to be like a small, like a coyote. It would have to be like a small. It can't be big, right? Maybe an antelope? A monkey? Yeah, I like that because the monkey could use a stick. And the monkey would use tools. That's much better, yeah. That's really good. One of your ten phrases. Yeah, somebody pulled the string. I just think that a, a Souls games could be put into literally any environment. And it makes them so good, right? You can make a Souls game out of anything. You're just recreating Tokyo Jungle. Kind of. I would like that. Kick. Dealing moderate damage yeah, to any dude, target look at, that... Look at that fucking The range. giraffe's main method of attacking is its kick. Dealing... Oh my... God. How long is that? <laughs> Move forward a couple frames. That's... Oh my god, dude. That's six feet? Moderate damage to any target that dares enter the giraffe's zone of control. However, when the giraffe really needs to deal some damage, it resorts to its signature move, the Ossicone Bash. The giraffe <laughs> swings its neck in a wide arc, with the intent to connect with the horn-like protrusions on its skull, called ossicones. I feel like they weren't built for that. There's no way they're supposed with to do this. Just one of them saw their boy do it, and they're like, damn, that works, I guess. I guess you're hitting the trachea, right? You're hitting them in this long-ass voice box. Their throat is like all of this. That shit is exposed. Can giraffes get their neck tangled? That's such a stupid question. There's no way. The intent to connect with they the can't, horn. right? They can't like loop around, <laughs> like they, can they tie in a knot, like in 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 merry melodies? You're <laughs> right. That was stupid. I'm just thinking of one like super evolved giraffe, where instead of like you know a ten foot neck, he has a thirty foot neck, and when he throws, it goes right. It spins all the way around. <laughs> Super evolved. Yeah, like a mega evolution. Mega giraffe, right? Like protrusions on its skull called ossicones. Connecting with this attack means pretty much instant game over for any oh. player hits. Unless they have an extremely large health pool, Ow. such as another giraffe. 
However, it is a bit more risky to just throw this move out, considering that it puts your normally okay, out of gonna... reach. Weak... Oh, that, that's what I'm talking about. See? They're friends now. <laughs> now they're together. Love wins. Point in a potentially vulnerable position. <laughs> what do you do here? You know how sometimes deer will get their, like, antlers crossed and they get stuck and then they die like that? That happens sometimes, right? What, I feel like that would happen with giraffes. Like, the horns get stuck and then they're just, they're like that forever. And also deals a little recoil damage with each use as well. And if an attacking player yeah. does manage to dodge the first swing and get in close, using this move becomes much more difficult. And Wait, to deals a little recoil Wait, damage with each use as well. Who won this? Is this like a shoot takedown? He got his horn. Did the giraffe win? There does. It's like a double leg takedown. He sprawled. Yeah. <laughs> this is an actual headlock. This is an actual honest to god headlock. That's amazing. Giraffe lost. Did he? I think this is a pin for giraffe. I think giraffe wins. Swing and that looks like someone in a giraffe suit. That horn is in. Oh, yeah, actually. Wait a minute. He's, he's laying on the horn. That shit probably hurts. Getting close. Using this move becomes got leg much locked? more difficult. Okay. Since the close range hitbox is a bit of a sour spot. But still, <laughs> the move much more difficult. Since the close range hitbox is a bit of a sour spot. I love Tier Zoo. That's great. That's, that's, that's funny. I like that a lot. But still, the mere threat of this move is enough to dissuade most attacks. Ooh, to the point that yeah. most Predator players won't even bother with a high level giraffe. Low level giraffe mains are a lot more vulnerable. Oh, and oh my this is God. where the efficacy of the giraffe's reach and height is really put to the test. That may be Upon sad. spawning in, the giraffe is pretty much helpless. Look at the it baby. doesn't have the height advantage on its opponents yet, but because of its <laughs> slender, it's pretty much helpless. It doesn't have the height advantage on its opponents yet. Seriously, buddy. But because of its slender, lanky shape, it has disadvantage on all oh, saving throws. Did he throws kick the, the yet. giraffe? But because of its slender, lanky shape, stop. It has kicked the shit out of his baby. Take that. Friendly fire, yeah. <laughs> it's advantage on all saving throws to avoid being grappled or knocked Aww. prone. And so it's the job of the higher level giraffe players to complete the long, arduous escort mission of protecting the newborn giraffe as it matures. Am I taller than a baby giraffe? How big is the shortest giraffe? Baby giraffe height. Damn. Daddy. Six feet. Oh my god! I've never seen a baby giraffe. I realize I've never seen a baby giraffe in person. That is so cute. Can we not domesticate them? No. You can't domesticate a giraffe? Are you sure? They grow up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Can I have a teacup giraffe? Maybe like a teacup giraffe. <laughs> Imagine... That sounds like a Family Guy plot. Oh, my God. Doesn't it? Peter buys a teacup giraffe, and it keeps getting bigger. And Lois gets really mad. And then it breaks through the ceiling. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I should send that to Seth MacFarlane. Peter did it already? Did he? I know. No, Peter had a horse. Uh that's a cutaway gag? You don't think that's A-plot? I think that's A-plot material. Maybe B-plot. No, wait. Continue this bit. What happens next? That's for the writers to decide. Hey, I just left the, the, the acorn in the ground. They have to turn it into a tree. You know what I'm saying? Bart Simpson had an elephant. Peter had a horse at one point. It got decapitated on the freeway in the Hangover movie. What? <laughs> I watched The Hangover for the first time the other day. That movie still holds up. It's still pretty good. It's not bad. The first one. It is absolutely like... How do I put this? Like, The Hangover movies are a period of comedy. Like, kind of like... You remember the Judd Apatow movies? Where every, like... The, the every scene ended with this like back and forth improv between like Seth Rogen and Paul Rudd 
Well, he's like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. Oh, you're not fucking me up because I'm going to fuck you up. If fucking were an Olympic sport, I would get a gold medal and th you would come in second. It's like that kind of shit for like three minutes and then it goes to the next scene. Early bro ship? Yeah. Super bad era? It was like pre su or post super bad. Super bad was its own thing, but. Oh, little, I love baby giraffes. Yeah, I think Superbad changed stuff. Superbad was in between American Pie and Knocked Up. I think Superbad is like the is the bridge between these two eras. You get what I'm saying? It was like American Pie 99, Superbad 2006, Knocked Up, 40-year-old virgin also. I don't know which one came first, but it's kind of that, yeah. What's this? No way! What the fuck? You're kidding! No way! Funnier, by the way. I think mine was funnier if he has a teacup giraffe and it keeps getting bigger and you see how it keeps getting bigger and affecting. But let's see where Seth goes with this. Yeah, that's pretty funny, yeah. Yeah, because th just the giraffe bit isn't strong enough. You have to get a cutaway... Plus a quagmire bit, plus the Cleveland tub thing, because that always slays. This is the final, like, is the knockout punch. Yeah, yours was better. It often is. Yeah, I should write. Honestly, I'm telling you, my my shit. How about this? My shit is a Bob's Burgers plot. It's a little bit more elevated, right? Maybe a song about the giraffe, something a little bit more. What do you mean, ew? We don't like Bob's Burgers here. <laughs> They're a little bit more high-minded, you know what I'm saying? I don't really like Bob's Burgers that much either. But I'll watch it if it's on. Oh, no, 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 no. Everybody tells me Bob's Burgers is good, and I'm like, why? They're like, oh, it's so wholesome. I'm like, I'm not watching that shit. <laughs> I'm not watching a wholesome show. Oh, my God, they're such good parents. It's not wholesome? It... it, it I, I do like I like the the little bit of Bob's Burgers that I've seen. Can't wait for you to force the cum bleach joke into your giraffe episode of Bob's Burgers. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Bob's Burgers is the right show for that. That's more like a big mouth bit. I think I got to write for a bunch of different shows. I think the cum bleach bit is probably better for like Big Mouth or Rick and Morty. <laughs> Maybe I hear they need some new writers. Wait, you said you would tweet that joke. Yeah, I thought better of it. I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want people. To... <laughs> okay. Unironically, <laughs> I'm in the talks with some people to like maybe, you know, partner. And I think tweeting the cum bleach bit would probably lose me some negotiations. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm in, I'm in negotiations currently. With some people who might want to, you know, I'm, I could stand to lose a lot with it. What's the cum bleach bit? I'll tell you in, I, my meeting is on Wednesday. <laughs> Depending on if I sign something, we'll, you'll, we'll see, okay? We'll see. Banger joke. Shut the fuck up. I know what you're doing now. You're gassing me up. You're trying to butter me up so I'll tell the joke. It's a very funny joke. It's such a good joke. I just have to present it right, right? It just has to be workshopped a little bit. It's funny. Think about what you stand to gain, though. At most, 20,000 likes. And that's if a comet passes overhead. That's so lucky. That's if I catch the wishing star. That's 20K. Now, because the giraffe's attack range is so Brands long love silly jokes. Not about, not about come uh, in my experience. God, it Don't is think able they would. to guard a wide area and pressure a counterattack on any player that would dare target the newborn. However, because the giraffe does not possess. Depends what brand. Name one brand. N even Trojan wouldn't be into that. Name one brand. Durex? No. No, condoms wouldn't be into cum jokes. They're trying to stop the cum. Gamer subs, maybe, actually. Who sells bleach? Clorox? <laughs> you ever notice our... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it sounds like a Clorox commercial. That might be a Clorox commercial or Mr. Clean.
as any AOE attacks, <laughs> defending against multiple. Say it. I'm not telling the joke. 3K subs, maybe. At once can 3K be subs, I'll tell often you. You guys got a board. ways to go. We'll hit it this week, maybe. Tank a few hits as the mother chases away one attack no at a time. That's now, so many subs. Yeah, it's a prime joke. Despite having not leveled up at all, the giraffe starts with oh, a pretty a generous baby. amount of HP. Oh, <laughs> it's so sad. How many of you guys forgot we were watching a video about giraffes? But even so, it's not uncommon for the escort mission to fail. Oh! With a respawn time oh shit, he's riding that shit! ...of 15 months, this is certainly one of the most frustrating aspects of giraffe gameplay. Oh no! You gotta Next, watch the baby for 15 months? Aww. Thanks, Wet Socks, for the five gifties. Hey, we're almost there. So close. Let's talk about individual matchups. First, we have the cheetah. Anyways, on a serious note, first we have the leopard. Now, the leopard... <laughs> Wait, what? 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 I don't... Is that like a bit? I don't know what that was. First, we have the cheetah. I, did, are cheetahs scared? Enough. Did he already... I bet he probably did a video about cheetahs. He was like, yeah, these guys are pussies. Cheetahs suck ass? Okay, but they're mad fast though, right? Anyways, on a serious note, first we have the leopard. Cheetahs are scared of everything? Really? So I could just yell really loud. And then, ah! <laughs> Cheetahs get bullied by dogs. Now, the leopard is one of the most interesting matchups because of its ability to climb and attack from a high vantage point. I don't really know the difference between leopards and cheetahs. Or panthers. Or cougars. Or bobcats. I think cheetahs are the fastest. Leopards go high in the tree. Right? Panthers and leopards are the same. Word? Point. Leopard players have been known to use their ability to climb as part of their ambush Bobcats strategy, are cute. pouncing on their target from above. This could mean it's the only predator in the game with an honest shot at landing a surprise crit against the giraffe. <laughs> but in all predator in the game. Damn, this is fucked up. I'd be mad as hell if I was a giraffe. With an honest shot at landing a surprise. Oh, he's just trying to eat the banana. Surprise crit against the giraffe. But in all honesty, this would be an insane ah! strategy. And since leopards hunt alone, there's really not much reason to try and take down such large prey. No? When they can survive just fine off of the standard diet of antelope and deer. Still, against a lower level giraffe, I could see this strategy working pretty well, if no allies were around to rescue it. Okay. But sure. since leopards kill slowly by strangling their target with their bite, this gives oh, the giraffe's do? party members a lot of time to react oh. and respond accordingly. This is similar to the issue lions have in their matchup against giraffes. Even matchup? <laughs> they go 50-50, huh? Compared to some of the other potential threats, a lion can't actually deal that much damage on its own to a giraffe. Even against a low- You know, I never really thought about the fact that, like, fights out in the wild aren't decided just- I thought it was like a Pokemon thing. 5-5, five, five, but it's annoying. I thought it was like a Pokemon thing, where if it's like, alright, if a lion fights an antelope, it's over. He always wins. Super effective. Seriously, I never considered the fact that, like, two animals could fight and one could win. At least not one that eats the other. Does that make sense? Like, if a bear and a gorilla fight, like, that one I could see going, you know, that's a fight, right? And we know gorilla wins, but it's like a fight. But when it comes to, like, predator and prey, I can't see it being, you know what I'm saying? I don't see it being 50-50. Low level giraffe player, it's unlikely they could take it out in a single attack. This again. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I know that I know we talk so much about the gorilla beating the bear. I know it gets annoying, but hey, here we are. Leading to the same issue as a leopard, where the giraffe's teammates would be able to rescue it. However, because Could you guys do me a favor? I haven't said this once in a year, and it's not a bit, it's not a joke. If you're here for the first time, could you follow? Because I, 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 I'm, I just want followers now. I hit 100k finally. I never asked for it, and I feel like I should start. Go ahead and drop a follow, please. Thank you. As lions do cooperate together, I actually don't say follow. I actually don't. Down Wait, I'm not under a category? What? Oh, shit. Even a large this whole time? Giraffe, but not without serious risk to the attackers. Oh and since God. lions is that bad? Does anybody care? We close in on their targets by staying low to the ground and moving slowly. The giraffe's height is perfectly suited I don't think to it detecting matters. their approach. Nobody's gonna find me on just chatting anyway. Watch the view count skyrocket. <laughs> even 
you to attack. Nobody will find you. It's Twitch. Nobody's gonna find me anyway. Leading to the same, even in other potential threats, a lion can't actually deal that much damage on its own to a giraffe. Even against a low-level giraffe player, it's unlikely they could take it out in a single attack. Leading to the same issue as a leopard, where the giraffe's teammate... Cody, bear versus lion, who you got? Bear wins. Bear beats lion easy. It ...would be able to rescue it. However... Wait, I went up 200 viewers? Are you fucking kidding me? I just changed the category. Are you serious? Did that really just happen? It has enough dead. Hey, if you're here, please don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave, okay? Please. Did that really happen? Hey, everybody. I went for three. Oh my god, what the fuck? It went to 1566. Are you fucking... Hi, everybody. Are you fucking kidding? Hey, everybody, please don't leave. Because sometimes it goes up and down. I can't fucking believe that. I'm so mad. Hey, everybody, if you're here for the first time, please follow. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you. However, because so lions fucking do dumb, man. cooperate, together it is possible for a pride of lions to bring down even a large adult giraffe. Ugh. But not without serious risk to the attackers. And since lions typically... Who you got in a fight? Sonics or a giraffe? Sonics like the guy? Sonics is like my height. Uh, but I don't know if he has combat experience. I would, I would kill a giraffe. I would beat a giraffe easily. Um, especially if I was given like a rope. And like a scooter or some kind of transportation. Sonics, though, I don't know if he's got it in him. Typically close in. I've got that killer instinct, you know what I'm saying? On their targets by staying low to yeah. the ground. It's going down. <laughs> there they go. There you go. You talk about killing one giraffe and all the sensitive snowflakes leave the stream. Oh, no, not my little baby. And moving slowly, the giraffe's height is perfectly suited to detecting okay, their approach. Of course, of course. Before they're in any real danger. Once again, I'm being so silent. Lions taking down giraffes does happen, but it's exceptionally rare. The Rhino is an interesting matchup. Rhino clears, right? Obviously, giraffes and... I could see Coney fucking up a giraffe. That's what I'm saying. Rhinos have no real reason... Although, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that you can see me doing it, assaulting an animal. ...to attack each other. But due to the Rhino's poor eyesight, it tends to perceive most players that come near... Ow! It to Ooh, oh my god! Lucky for the giraffe... The rhino's horn is not usually able to reach the giraffe's weak Look at point. the baby! So as long as it can avoid getting knocked over, giraffes tend to do just fine in this matchup. Cody would beat the shit out of a rhino. Range. Stop! I'm not gonna catch any rhino beef. Not here. I got no beef with rhinos. What the fuck is that horn? This is the Sephiroth of rhinos. The fuck is that? If I saw that in the wild, I would, I would, I was gonna say I would jump off a, a cliff, but I'd probably just run in the opposite direction. I would not, I would not fight that rhino. Does anybody fight a rhino? Lions don't do that shit, right? Coney would ride that damn rhino like a special level, <laughs> like Rambi. <laughs> just give me a saddle. Actually, that looks uncomfortable. Oh, he's got a saddle. Rhinos got saddles on them. Look at that. How do you climb that? How are you climbing a rhino? I guess you go up this way. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a climbing gym. This is a problem. You go. You have to go front first. Climb a giraffe, then jump. Of a rhinoceros's horn. I'd be so fucking mad if I saw this rhino. It'd piss me off. This is God's favorite rhino. The giraffe's kick can still outrange it. And although rhinos are quite tanky, a good Ooh. kick to the face is usually enough to dissuade further attacks. Aww. An important matchup I want to discuss is the hyena. Now, because they can't really jump, hyenas don't have anywhere near the vertical threat Wait, range really? that lions or leopards do. They can't so jump? Attacking an adult giraffe is pretty much out of the question. However, instead of this increased agility, hyenas have a much more powerful bite. Uh -huh. Rather than requiring a critical hit, a hyena ah! can crack bone with a single bite anywhere on the target, which can immediately disable their prey and make rescue attempts. Oh futile. my god, that this poor giraffe! This is particularly giraffe. effective against players who rely on their teammates for protection, as even if an ally does step in to fight off the attackers, oftentimes it's simply oh, too late no. and the damage has already been done. Oh. Eventually the teammates will move on and the oh. hyenas will be able to close out the kill. That's a Lastly, sad I don't movie. Think it's any real surprise to see that giraffe... What do you mean, let's go? This dude's on the hyena's team? Still have Hey, listen. I want I just want everybody to know where I stand. If you're a fan of hyenas in this chat, unfollow me now, okay? I don't want any hyena fans in here. I don't want you enjoying my content, and I'm not a fan of your animal. <laughs> am 
it is 10,000 followers. I'm so brave. So brave. I actually like hyenas. I, I like coyotes a lot, but I think it's because I'm from a place that doesn't have coyotes. I think coyotes are neat. To respect the space of an elephant. Elephants are tall enough to gore a giraffe with their powerful tusks. So if there's ever a territorial dispute between an elephant and a giraffe, the elephant always wins. Thankfully for a giraffe, well, yeah. its longer legs grant it a faster run speed. Oh my God. So while elephants do pose a serious threat, this hardly ever actually results. Dude, the elephant has the fucking speed. rope on him. So the elephant always has the rope to take down the giraffe. Dude, the elephant's perfect for this. Just wrap that shit around the leg. While Why would they fight? What they got to fight about? Elephants do pose not a serious threat. This hardly ever actually results in direct damage. Turf? In fact, by and large, rather than competing with other herbivores for the best resources, the giraffe's unique access to treetops means that it actually makes a lot of sense for Aww. other herbivores to tolerate or even appreciate They're the presence in love. of a giraffe. They aren't taking away any food that they would have accessed anyway, and could also serve as an early warning system if they see predators coming. So, while they're definitely not the most overpowered build, they're certainly up there. Near untouchable for the vast majority of their playthrough, and a fairly reliable protection in the early game. I'd put them in solid A tier. In fact, okay. it's somewhat strange that other herbivore players haven't started specking into similar height advantages to gain the same oh, survival perks as the giraffe. The giraffe is extremely Stop unique, analyzing. unique in its role in the meta, that was which is weird because historically, the treetop grazer giant type build has been extremely successful. Giant long-necked rhinoceros reigned supreme during the Oligocene. What the fuck is that? And extremely successful. Giant That shit look like Apex Legends. Horse? It's a long horse. It's a brontosaurus. Some horror movie found footage. Yeah, I saw that shit in Annihilation. Cody would beat the shit out of an Oligocene. No, that's the time period, dumbass, but I would beat that thing too. I would, I would does... Rain is there a tail? It's a rhino, so yeah, probably. Preem during the Oligocene. I'd beat his ass. And before that, we saw this strategy absolutely dominate during the Mesozoic in the form of the sauropod. Dino Don't think I could beat a sauropod. Usually, usually. Dinosaur. So why only the giraffe in today's meta? There are a few theories on this, but that's beyond the scope of this video. In terms of strategy and playstyle, the closest thing we have today is probably the camel. But surprisingly- Why do you say it like that? <laughs> Did that sound weird to anybody else? In terms of strategy and playstyle, the closest thing we have today is probably the camel. Probably the camel. <laughs> I guess a camel is a giraffe. It's a sand giraffe. That felt bad to say. It felt derogatory. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't, but I didn't mean surprisingly, that. yeah, I'm doing. The giraffe is not that closely related to camels. No, the giraffe only has two close relatives in the current meta. Name the first one. is the okapi, a strange <gasps> oh my god, they're babies! Sort of a okapi are cute. Deer and Look at their beautiful eyelashes. <laughs> what a lovely lady! Look at that beautiful. Look at look at the smolder on this. Giraffes. And the second is one that basically nobody would expect. Who? The pronghorn. No way! The pronghorn? This These animals are weird because their eyes like go into the horns. That shit's weird. Which is completely different than the giraffe in both stature and location. That's different both in all Both the okapi ways. and giraffe are only stature playable on the location, Africa server. Dude. But to find the pronghorn, you need to travel all the way to the North America server. What are they doing the up there? The pronghorn deserves an entire video to Aww. itself since it's such a fascinating build with an extremely distinct strategy from everything else on the American server. Okay, I had no idea pronghorns were up here. That's not a all joke. All the way to the North America server. Pronghorns are here? They are just deer. Unique my ass. <laughs> I thought pronghorns were only southwest. I, I didn't know they were here. You see them in national parks? Really? These fucking things are annoying. They are everywhere on base in Wyoming. <laughs> the pronghorn deserves an entire video. Didn't you play Red Dead 2? Yeah, but Red Dead 2 also has like bison. We killed them, right? Or buffalo. Uh... God, I got the city.
Wait, neither of them are extinct? I thought buffalo or bison were extinct. They're both still around? Oh. Good for them. Video to itself, since it's such a fascinating build with an extremely- Okay, stop laughing. There- Hold on. They're near threatened, so shut the fuck up. Okay. Oh, they're the same. <laughs> okay, how come if I search our buffalo extinct, it says near threatened. If I say our bison bison extinct, not extinct. I guess that's true. That's They're both true. <laughs> both of those things are true. It's just a little... All right. Really ...distinct strategy from everything else on the American server. And guess what? That what? video, it already exists. Yeah. You can watch it right now, a month before everyone else. By subscribing to Nebula. Not a CTA. Oh, Andre. Oh, my YouTuber is making money. No. Come on, man. What are you doing? Nebula is fire, though. Is it? Is this Nebula? I thought this was a Curiosity. A no, it sir. is Nebula. It's always Nebula or Curiosity stream. Those guys hate each other. It's like Crips and Bloods. Those guys are. Boom, boom. Damn, the entirety of Casino Royale available on Nebula. That feels like uh, that that might be illegal. Go watch it there before <laughs> it gets taken down. Nebula's YouTubers Curiosity Stream is documentaries. Oh, there it's like a it's like a discovery thing. Okay, I didn't know they were the same thing. My bad. Good movie. However, I regret to inform you. We have ads coming up. Three minutes. I should probably... I should probably... Should I snooze? Should I pop it? I should I should pop it. I should pop it, right? All right, we got ads, everybody. But don't worry, because you can avoid the ads. You can avoid the ad dimension for an entire month. For 30 days, I will let you escape the ad dimension. All you have to do is hand over that prime. And I know some of you have them because I see that crown next to your name. Hand it over. Run the ads, king. <laughs> okay, this ad break is sponsored by next person to prime. Who's sending us to the ad dimension? Who is the harbinger of the ads? Who is the little devil with the pitchfork that's going to push you into the pit? Who is it? Somebody's got to drop a prime. Otherwise, you'll never get ads. Somebody's going to uh, poke you guy a little imp, a little demon. Somebody, drop a prime right now. A prime word tier one. I'll take it. Gaitosu. There we go. <laughs> I did it. Yep. Send him to hell. Thanks, Gaitosu. You're going to the ad dimension. I'll see you in a couple minutes. <laughs> what if nobody did it? I just got to run no ads for the rest of the night. Thanks, Normal Robin. I'll give it up to you, too. All right, sick. I didn't want to be the one to send him. Ah, you were trying to be a good guy. I see. All right. Has anyone ever redeemed move into my house? Yeah, a couple people. They were at my house for a little while, but um, didn't work out. So, you know, I had them uh, taken care of. Can you turn the heat up? <laughs> Again? I don't know if we can uh, stand having all these people with all this heat in the house. I need to thin it out. I was being very gracious for the winter, but... Slinks menacingly? This is my uh, cemetery expansion slink. Hmm. <laughs> Tell them to cuddle. <laughs> Make it stop. An elderly woman is telling me about the corporate ladder. Your ass better sit down and listen. When I get told about the corporate ladder, my ass sits down and listens. Just roll the ads. Did you escape them? Did you escape the ads? Surely that's a mobile moment. I'm not in the ads. <laughs> okay. So since you escaped the ad dimension before it was time and I caught you, you have to call it. Heads or tails? You have to call it. Tails? I'll see you Tuesday. 
I should have done one, eight hours. See, one hour feels too short. Eight hours feels too long. I thought I thought there'd be like a four hour in there, you know? I should just do eight hours. <laughs> so it's not just me that gets that ad glitch? Do you just get like one ad? I've seen people get one ad. Which is crazy. I got four. Dude, I don't know how that works. Guys, be honest. Okay, be honest with me, because I've had a couple YouTube comments, and now I'm insecure. How are the ads on the YouTube videos? Because I've had people say, holy shit, there's a lot. Bad? Because <laughs> I've had people say, oh my god, that's a lot. But also, I think it only gives you a certain amount of ads depending on what you've seen before. Like, I, from what I hear, it's like you, YouTube decides based on your viewing habits. I have ad block. I'm allowed to say that's okay on YouTube, right? You guys are turning off ad block on Twitch, right? But on YouTube, it's okay. On YouTube, it's okay. But on Twitch... You have them turned off, right? Okay. Surely you have that block on on YouTube only. Good. Coney, I made this emote for you. It's actually useful. Call it. I'm not letting people slinking every time they hear that shit. Call it right now. <laughs> you, you called it before I even pulled it out. You knew you were going to die. What? How did you? You just knew the moment that you sent that. You wanted to die. This is a choice you made. All right, big heads. <laughs> All right, you survive. Congratulations. Slinking. And he wins. That's so fucked up. I need like a I need like a killing gimmick. How do I kill people? Maybe like this. If you call it wrong, it just fucking didn't work. I'm so stupid. I was like, I, I guys, I'm so dumb. I held this up and I was like, which one of these pulls it down? I know one of these makes it chomp. Uh, if I do like this, it doesn't really work because you already only see the inside. You guys want to bet? Even Steven? You guys want to even odd? All right, here we go. Quick prediction before we watch the next movie. Here we go. Hold on. All right, uh, here we go. Win some channel points. What you are predicting is whether, whether the tooth I hit will be even or odd, okay? If it's even, vote even. If it's odd, so it's one, two, three. I'm going to go all the way down. You're either an even Steven or an odd Todd. Go ahead and do it quick. We haven't done this in a while, so I hope I get it right. Evens are demons. That doesn't rhyme. <laughs> Close, though. It's almost there. Biggest betting loser gets one hour timeout. Hey, you can set your own rules. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Although you are calling it, yeah. I need a I need a weapon to kill you guys with. Maybe maybe this is like maybe it's like this is the this is the thing. Now if I kill you, good. I just watched clips from that movie today. What a good movie. You guys ever see that movie? What movie? You don't know what movie that is? With the pneumatic cow gun and the, the coin flip and the... <laughs> the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Okay. All the predictions are in. Here we go. Odd, even. 
Odd, even. Odd, even. Odd. It's an odd friends night. Congratulations, odd friends. Damn, that's crazy. It's dead 50-50. Oh, my God. Rarity made 247K. Jesus. Damn, Faroz. 250K down. That's tough. Odd Todds win. W for the Todds. <laughs> okay. Let's watch the worst team in Hell's Kitchen history. Uh-oh. To be successful in Hell's Kitchen, it requires good communication. So I don't watch Hell's Kitchen. Is this is this going to be fun? Let's see talent and of course great teamwork but it's safe to say a team of eight to ten chefs all being talented and easy to work with is hard to come by in hell's kitchen however while no team in hk has ever been perfect some teams stand out more than others for just how i've had a video on my watch later forever that i really want to watch but i don't want to watch without getting in touch with the creator but i don't know how because his dms are closed and I don't want to do that thing where I follow them just to DM and say, hey, can you follow me so we can DM? Like, I don't want to do that fucking, you know what I mean? But uh, with Jerry Springer passing, it made me remember this video. It's from Doplex, the controversial history of trash television. And it's like, you know, Geraldo Rivera, uh, Ricky Lake interview shows. Like, this, this looks fascinating for me. Just watch it? Yeah, but that feels... I don't like watching shit from smaller creators if they're not okay with it. It's duplex. Sorry. You know what I mean? I feel bad. Because like 15K, 23K. Coney thinks he's a big shot. It's not that I'm a big shot. I just don't want to steal labor, right? This video is like well edi edited and written and documented. And my ass is just like, Duh! <laughs> funny, funny YouTube. I, it feels It feels shitty to do. Email him? Maybe atrocious they really are what's going on guys i'm flynn masters and today we'll be looking at the worst teams in hell's kitchen history the now when it comes teams. to the rankings i'll not only be looking at how bad they were during services and challenges but i'll also be factoring in just how unlikable these teams were as a group before we begin if you love hell's kitchen then please be sure to smash that like and subscribe button as we're building a great hk community on this channel and i've got plenty of great hk videos coming out on a weekly basis damn hk has a lot of content that's crazy. There are so many people, like so many streamers watch HK and this fucking YouTube. I didn't know there was like a whole, like a micro, uh, internet, like niche little cottage industry around it. With all that said, let's take a look at the worst red and blue team. <laughs> Why are you pogging HK? In Hell's it's Kitchen faster. History. Bloody hell, here I go again. Let's start. By the way, I went to uh, Gordon Ramsay Steakhouse the other day for a nice date with my wife. That beef welly was shitty. I don't know what happened. It's usually better. It might be because I went on like 3 p.m. in <laughs> on like a Friday. It was like in the afternoon. Might have been bad. Send it back. Dude, the steak was raw. Mal asked for medium rare and they brought it rare. It was like blue. I was mad as hell. Start off. Why didn't you complain? Because it's a fucking welly, man. What do you... I mean, like, it was fine. It just wasn't, cri like, it wasn't flaky or crispy. You know what I mean? You guys ever had a good Wellington? They're delicious. With some honorable mentions. I got the B team, yeah. <laughs> get into the top five. The season nine red team could be considered one of the worst teams in terms of likability. But to be fair, that's mostly because of one person. Like, that, that to other people makes them feel as though you're, they're not taking okay, that I'm serious. I'm not trying to make anyone okay, feel like I'm barrier. just telling you what you said. Elise, can I and please talk make me what? You don't make me feel inferior. I just don't like how you try to act like no one else around you is taking it serious. Uh -oh. You may consider a lot of the old school teams as some Drama of the Drama in the but kitchen. Fair, it's expected that the town Porterhouse slaps. Nope. Sirloin or New York Strip. It wouldn't be great in earlier seasons. Porterhouse too big. Considering how new of a concept Hell's Kitchen was, and half the contestants weren't even pro chefs, the season 15 blue team featured some pretty terrible chefs, included a sexist, and only one of its members <laughs> made it to the Black Jackets. And lastly, oh. the team that just missed making it- That's quite an allegation. He just kind of threw that out there. There's a sexist. Oh. <laughs> on my list is the season 17 red team and remember season 17 was an all-star season of how course. can an all Ew, see that was the shit they try to give me it's fucking raw all-star team be one of the worst teams ever that's what well, they gave they're terribly me inconsistent and the quotes all-stars were only brought back due to their villainous personalities they ended up being a complete train wreck with those honorable or in this case this honorable mentions out of the Ooh. way let's get into what i think are the top five worst teams in hell's kitchen history let's get into it 
Let's get into it. Let's go. We begin with the team coming from Season 8. And I'll be honest, I had a tough time choosing Bro, which team should be on the make. list. As with Season 8 being the weakest group of chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, I knew I had to include at least one of them. However, I think the red team just edges out the blue team in terms of talent and uh, likability. Sure. As take. long as you don't include one person. But seriously, the season eight blue team had Raj on it for <laughs> oh three episodes. Of Sabrina course is the goat. Is there? Okay. Do, this is a stupid question. I was going to say, you think people play it up for the camera? You're so dumb. Do you think these people who are on TV and uh, then audition to be on TV and know that they're being filmed, do you think they actually aren't 100% themselves because they know that they're going to be on TV? Yeah, a fucking course. Yeah. They're going to be a train wreck to start. You're 50. How dare you fucking condescend hey, to me? You're 50? That's why he's condescending. Of course they're going to be a train wreck to start. You're 50. How dare you fucking condescend hey, to me? Why did he lead with that? You're 50. Yeah. That's the condescending people. Hey, you stupid f Bro, you're 50 years old and you couldn't pick pasta. You're a fucking douchebag. Go, bro. Dilly dally of I hope I never hit 50. Shut, up. Shut the f up. Things don't get much better for oh the blue God. team in terms of talent, as Louis, Boris, and Rob were all horribly inconsistent. And this is how non subs react to Coney when they get ads. In fact, the only two blue team members to make it to the Black Jackets this season were Trev and Russell, and Trev only made it that far due to being carried by the red team at the final nine. And go figure that the only two blue team members to make the Black Jackets this season were easily the most unlikable figures on their original team, with Russell even taking the crown for a lot of HK fans when it comes to the most hated contestant. Just got dirty. Time in the train tracks. I came out alive, and you are in so much trouble, bro. What? What the fuck is this? So much. Wait, is that there like a part? Is he? Is this part of the competition? Did he get a challenge? What? I've never been that mad. That like I'm in the living room and I'm like, oh, I gotta go. Get on the 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 fucking Bowflex. Right away. In the chef jacket and everything? That's like 10 plates. <laughs> I wonder if Raja's early presence still had an... I love the reaction shots. Everybody's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> How many plates is that? Dude is pumping. Look at that form. And you know he's natty. I wonder if Raja's he early... looked at him... <laughs> They're watching, right? You see this? I wonder if Raja's early presence still had an effect on the blue team. Oh my the god! Oh I my god! He he big boyed the other guy and he drew aggro from Ramsey. Oh no! Raja He's hitting the fucking. This probably is really fucked up in Britain. This is probably the worst thing you can do in the UK, right? Not even that. <laughs> this feels more condescending. But this. His early presence still had an effect on the blue team throughout the season, which might explain why they were so bad. Raise your hand for Raj. Uh -huh. Everybody's just completely jealous of me. And that's the only reason why he's they want to eliminate me, because they know I'm going to win. Because they know I'm 50. The nickname for the number four team on the list is Hell's Bitches, and for good reason. The fourth worst team in Hell's Kitchen history is the red team from Hell's Kitchen Season 10. Is there now, always just like a big person there to like soak up all the aggro? <laughs> Talent-wise, they aren't There's bad. always like these chest-bumping things where like they get up on the big... They were pretty even know? with the blue team service wise The tank? Okay, yeah. Guys, and in fact, beat them six to four when it came to reward challenges. But man, the fact that the they big even won chef is an archetype. One challenge this season is incredible in its own right, with how bad the personalities were on this team. Kimmy, Robin, and Tiffany are some of the worst female personalities to ever step foot in Hell's Kitchen, as they constantly got into fights and, for some reason, had it against Barbie from the start. Wonder why he yeah. added female as a qualifier there. Get that bitch out of here. Barbie's gonna be gone. The tanks keep Gordon Ramsay out. Actually, that guy did draw aggro. Hold on. He did draw aggro from Gordon Ramsay. There he is. Oh, wait. No, he has the wrong per Oh, he's drawing aggro from his teammate. Friendly fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Nah, yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. And while constantly got into fights, and for some reason, had it against Barbie from the start. What's the DPS class in Chef Land? Dude, I, I don't know enough about chefs to have a funny answer to that. Meats? I don't... The Carver. <laughs> the Carver, for sure. The Carver. Sue chefs? I don't even know what Sue is. Skinny white guy? Like the guy from The Bear? Carver is a bruiser? <laughs> Gordon is the only DPS class. No, Gordon Gordon is a is like a um He he's a non hostile mob, right? Like he just walks around until you draw aggro and then he just he's the witch. He's the witch in Left 4 Dead. You don't know him want to enrage the witch. He just walks around the kitchen. <laughs> I'm gonna get that bitch out of here. Barbie's gonna be gone. <laughs> I'm gonna beat this bitch's ass, dude. I know I hear you. Barbie's are Was that really that loud? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was way louder for you than it was up there, I think. The reason why we went down tonight. Hibachi <laughs> chefs are DPS easy. They just be emoting and shit, throwing the egg in their hat. I don't know why she's here. Die! I'm betting a thousand. And while their cooking skills weren't nearly as bad as their personalities, they certainly weren't perfect. Danielle, Roshni, and Brianna all struggled during their short time on the red team. Kimmy's worst performance came on a southern night, and season 10 was, of uh, course, okay. the season of the kick -in. What? Gordon recently announced that they are removing the ability to jabast in all future Hell's Kitchen seasons. Oh, uh, really? Is that true? They're not going to jabast anymore? Yeah. Good thing they're still on this chat. And there was a plethora of them in the right kitchen this season. Raw pork again, I love Jabasting Guy. Why do you have to put your name on the dono every time? You're just not Jabasting Guy. You have to put your name on it. I'm bloody in the middle. It's your brand. One more thing. Get out. Burn mash. Get out. Get out. Dude, Let I would kill. I love that sound effect. Get out. <laughs> the drum guy goes nuts on that with the fill. Look at me. I. Thermometer. Get out! In the food, get out! <laughs> I'm gonna, I gotta add this for when you guys fail the coin flip. Get out! I should do... Oh my god. I should be a Gordon Ramsay streamer. And when somebody has pissed me off with enough chat messages, pull them aside. You've been insulting me all night! You brought up my height six times and you said I wasn't funny! Get out! So I told a really funny joke, and you, I canted sarcastically. Get out! The appropriate nickname and the overall inconsistency. You didn't I even laugh at my complete joke. Red team deserves a spot in the top five. Oh well, at least his team gave us the legendary <laughs> Christina Wilson. If this list was based strictly <laughs> yes, on yes streamer, yes streamer, I'll laugh every time. Yes streamer. How unlikable these teams were. Then That's there's just low tier God. There's no doubt this team would be number one. At number three is without question the most hated team in Hell's Kitchen history. The really? blue team from season 16. Seriously, what? I can't believe they remember like the colors of the team. In the world was production thinking, casting so many douchebags on one team. I mean, let's go through the list of assholes on the blue team. Yeah, let's To start do it. off, there's Johnny, an absolute hothead Hate who was Johnny. always putting the blame on others and was one of the biggest culprits of the overall bullying that took place on the blue team this season as his misogyny was on full display in the absolute most disgusting of ways. You Spe gotta stop the misogyny. Speaking of misogyny, arguably that. a top five Hell's Kitchen douchebag came from this blue team with that being Matt Hearn. Hate that was Matt also a Hearn. constant- Damn, we doxed him? Full government? Bully. And notably was always putting down the woman. But what makes Matt stand out so much- Is his head. What the fuck is that? I guess it's just the hat. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just that it looks it looks oddly shaped, right? Much is He's that going he durst mode? <laughs> didn't even show respect to Chef. Slime? It's not. He was always putting down the woman. But I know makes... Slime probably hates that too. It's just a guy with a hat and bald. It's not stand out. So I know. Much. I if I, you know what I'm gonna I I'm gonna do this in Slime's name. I'll do it for Slime. Now I'm only gonna give you ten minutes. Because I have a softer heart. But I gotta do it for him. Is that he didn't even show respect to <laughs> Chef Ramsay. I've been lurking in Slime's uh, streams lately. Oh my god. He is ruthless. Didn't even have the chance to call it. Slime won't let you call it. Slime does not let you call it. 
Even you have to lurk. I lurk at every stream. I do not be talking. I'll lurk for like two hours, and then I'll be active in chat for ten minutes, and then I go back to lurking. That's my chatter personality. That's gen generally what I do. I'm legit afraid to comment in it. Good. If you don't have something... See, my chat is just shit all the way down. The TV sort of invites it. Hey, look at me. I'm on the TV. I'm a part of the experience. Slime's chat is you got to bring something to the discussion. You got to be funny or, or or have something nuanced or interesting to say. But, like, you, you, can't, you can't just go in there with, with some bullshit. This is just stream of consciousness, right? That's that's kind of the vibe here. Is this is any unhinged thought that comes out of your brain? Slime chat is like that good fella scene in the restaurant. Yeah. It's brutal. The Coney chatter and the slime chatter are wildly different breeds. They absolutely are. I hope you guys behave when you're in there. The worst part is Slime Chat is also fucked up with a lot of annoying people. <laughs> Slime Chat is is so annoying. Like, even if he tries to get rid of it, they're so annoying. He tries to get rid of them, but he can't. He can't keep up. That's what you get from streaming Valorant. That's true. I guess it's kind of the category. Yeah. We're the Weenie Hut Jr. <laughs> I just don't like banning people. I think people should be allowed to be annoying on the internet. I think we're, the world and life is hard enough that if Yahoo! people want to be annoying on the internet, that's okay. What do you mean? Any thought? I only provide well thought out <laughs> chat messages. And you changed your name now. Now you're the Jabasta guy. You fully accepted the bit. Okay, fun. I just think people should be annoying on the internet, and if I if, if I have to be annoyed every once in a while, that's okay. If I have to suffer it, I will take on that burden for the cost of one Twitch Prime. We're almost at 2800 If you guys have a Prime, go ahead and check below the stream. It's an easy way to subscribe. Your diet, Germa. No, I'm not. I'm just white. <laughs> Any goofy white guy is Germa. I'm do I don't even play video games. He plays video games. I was baby Ludwig. I'm diet Germa. I'm fucking... I, I've, I'm j no matter what, I'm just a white guy streamer. Any white guy streamer. White squeaks. <laughs> I, I, I'm good for him for getting big enough to get that, by the way. That's nice. Because I thought he was Indian Northern Lion. So, you know, it all it's all full circle. He's an asshole. Alolan Sage Jam? Like, I have one bad night. Sage Jam? I do flawlessly. Well, maybe a little. I, go home. I don't think Sage Jam's voice has ever gone above, like, what, 10 decibels? <laughs> His ass is calm. The whole time I've been here, it's been nothing but disrespect. If I was on the street right now, and he came up to me with that same I'd Say Jam respects what he makes and does too much. True. We tried to get him on Panda. He's like, I don't do that shit. I was like, all right. <laughs> like, I have one bad night. So he wants to make artisanal content made with love. Organic dough in the kitchen every morning. I didn't even show respect to Chef Ramsay. Chef Ramsay is an asshole. Like, I have one bad night service, and everything else I do flawlessly, and then I go home. The whole time I've been here, it's been nothing but disrespect. If I was on the street right now, and he came up to me with that same <laughs> I'd fuck him up. Oh, yeah, this is the guy that tried to fight him. One of, if not Wait, he is slime. He is the slime tattoo. Oh, never mind. My bad, whoever said that before. <laughs> Hold on. Unban that guy. Unban that guy. That kind of looks like slime's tattoo on the arm. That's a different guy? Is it? No, that's Matt, right? Is that not Matt? With that same that's not Matt. Fuck him up. My ass is not Point paying blank. attention. Gennaro is one of, if not the least passionate chef to ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, this is the most French man I've ever seen. There's something about it. Maybe different facial hair, but I, it's something about this pose with Le Wee Cigarette. Enter Hell's Kitchen. Polly was Le Cigarette Petite a complainer and was always putting the blame on others especially during the end game and then of course you have andrew who literally cheated on his fiance on national tv to be what? with heather all we're doing is laying next to each other me and heather are friends you know we're out here enjoying the moment and andrew so hey am i gonna flirt with her a little bit maybe i get married in a couple months so it's probably not gonna be a strong relationship how did why do people think that's gonna work that's so weird not right. Oh. That got taped too. 
why would you do that? It's on TV, dude. You know the producers aren't going to cut that. You can't go to the producer room and be like, hey, man, I just asked for something really embarrassing. Can you edit that out? Talent-wise, they stuck uh, as well. As the red team beat them in eight of the ten services, and they got kicked out of record seven right times. There. And Polly, of all people, was the best chef to come from that team. I mean, Polly is a fighter, but when someone as inconsistent as him ends up being the only competition for yeah. Heidi, Heather, and Ryan, you know these teams are lopsided. The no, only positive Polly, for the season bro. 16 Polly blue team it. is that they actually did have the upper hand over the red team when it came to the challenges, winning seven of Wait, 12. Wait, is this boys versus is that girls? They actually did have the upper hand over the red team when it came to the challenges. Do they always do that? Winning 7 of 12. And that's it always is. Oh, I didn't know that. That's the only thing that keeps them from being the worst team in Hell's Kitchen history. That's what every season is. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you even look at me. Like, just stop talking to me for the rest of this season. I Thank love you. the drum Good. guy. I'm not drinking the haterade, but Jessica, shut the f up. I confess I hate Jessica. I would kill to see a Hell's Kitchen performance live with, like, a guy on drums just... You could turn this into a musical. That's what you should do. Should have a Hell's Kitchen musical with a guy on drums and that's good. maybe a violin, right? Yep, Stage yeah. play. <laughs> that'd be likes that'd be you. cool as hell. Birdman. Yeah, like a Birdman I'm shit, dude. Thrill. Nobody likes you. Yeah, that's a drill. I know most people consider this team number one, especially since this team's failures was the main driving point of the season, but at number two is the blue team from season 11. I mean, what can you say? Stomp there was 14 the challenges show. that season, and they only won two of them. And the second one just so happened to come after Janelle, the winner of the season, joined Zach and John at the final six. While it wasn't quite as lopsided dinner service wise, this season's blue team still had some pretty bad chefs who made some all time bad mistakes. Sebastian is one of the most notorious first boots in Hell's Kitchen due to his less than serious attitude Jackie, we got uh, to me. Uh, a little bit Jackie, Jackie. <laughs> oh no ah! Sebastian has angered the witch seek shelter Zaki wacky sorry so I apologize about that chef yeah do me a favor get out yes chef Oh, Barrett and Jeremy made some of the worst mistakes in the show's history, oh, as Barrett like committed two deadly Zaki acts in back-to-back -back services, while Jeremy made, in my opinion, the dumbest mistake of all time in Hell's Kitchen. What did he do? See those six glamorous ladies, slightly older? Uh -huh. Yeah. And look. Oh. oh my god. The paper. You got the parchment on it, man? What, you trying to kill people? No. Wait. Paper on- what is that, salmon? Wait, I thought that was breading. Parchment? Like like uh like the fucking constitution? What do you mean parchment? Like 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 papyrus paper? I don't know what that means. The wrap it comes in. I thought that shit was like like chicken parmesan. I was like, oh damn, that shit panko. Right? Coney has never cooked in his life. Not fish! I think that's fish. Parchment paper. Got you. Coney has never been in a kitchen. No! <laughs> I was a waiter for a bit at Bob Evans. We didn't use parchment. We served comfort food. Chat, we're never getting a cooking stream. Who needs to cook when you have Factor? Guys, check out Factor. They deliver great, fresh meals right to your house, and all you have to do is microwave. It's already ready-made. You can get 50% off your first box by using my code. Go to the panel below and sign up for Factor. You get 50% off. You can get a ton of meals this week for way cheaper than normal. Listen, if you don't want to do it now, that's okay. They're going to be on for a whole month. Uh, w Factor, we love Factor here. They make some delicious meals. I can't wait to get my box later this week. Check out Factor. The paper. You got the parchment on it, man? I thought that oh, shit was bread. Hey! For Chef James's wife, pink chicken. Chef James's wife is pregnant. Oh my gosh. Watch your back. Come on, come down. Oh. Oh. Hey, all of you, come here. Some disgusting pig brought me the sample scrambled eggs. <laughs> Wait, what? The sample? Sample. What do you mean the sample? Like the Just plastic? What? Pig what do you? Brought me the sample scrambled eggs. What does that mean? The sample scrambled eggs. The sample scrambled eggs that I cooked an hour ago. Make sure you guys study the sample plates. <laughs> Wise <laughs> chef. Mmm, I like that. Nothing goes to waste. 
He's looking around. I need eggs fast. Wait a minute. Oh, that's a wise chef. I like that, actually. Very resourceful. To say Dan and Ray didn't act their age would be an understatement, as Dan was the definition... Oh, damn! Somebody signed up for Factor! Thank you, whoever that was. Hope you enjoy your meals. ...of a whiner and complainer, while Ray was constantly getting into petty arguments with Dan, and to his kitchen etiquette wasn't great, considering he had been a chef for over 30 years. Raymond, taste that. Fingers. Spoons are everywhere. Ray, you just stuck your finger into a risotto. Spoons. He said fingers? years Raymond taste that oh my god they hit the water phone immediately fingers fingers <laughs> oh no that's a drakent oh no spoons are everywhere right he actually undraked you stuck your finger into a risotto in front of chef Ramsay in Hell's Kitchen. that's just stupid other than the fact that they competed pretty well against the red team when it came to the services, the main thing that keeps this team out of the top spot is due to the three great chefs of John, he called Anthony, that shit out like he was in chat. and Michael. John, of course, was a beast, and Michael and Anthony should have both made it much further, but were unfairly eliminated over the inconsistent Zach. As Ramsey and production likely knew that keeping Zach around would give them the best odds at creating a female-dominated black jacket group to keep in line with the theme of the season. And yeah, if that was indeed the goal of production, Zach proved to them that it was smart to keep him around for as long as possible. Hey, look at me. I don't know what he meant by that. I don't know if is if is uh is Hell's Kitchen woke? How progressive. They said they said they wanted to keep Zach around so the girls would win. <laughs> woke kitchen. <laughs> I saw a thumbnail the other day that said MCU and that made me laugh. Apparently, that's like a thing in like conservative uh, MCU, like, you know, criticism thing. The little hermaid, <laughs> which is very funny because she's already a girl. <laughs> that's really good. Come on. Pretty good. No shut. Don't shut down on me, Zach. No, I'm not shutting down. Zach's got nine lives, man. But with three people in the kitchen, now the spotlight's on, dude. Have you seen the fish design? Dude, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> dude, what? I, like, what is Disney doing? It, it can't be intentional throwing, right? Like, they can't... Because, like, The Lion King is one of the worst movies I've ever... I watched, like, the first 15 minutes. I was like, I can't do this. Like, it feels like they're intentionally throwing. But I don't... They couldn't... Is there any merit to that? Right? They have to make a shit ton of money. Refreshing public domain. Not on The Lion King. Or Beauty and the Beast. That shit was 90s. I could see it for Jungle Book, right? But I feel like Disney's inting. This flounder is so... <laughs> that fucking Sebastian. It's horrible, dude. Uh, whatever. In my opinion, the worst team in Hell's Kitchen history is the red team of Season 7. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Imagine Coney taking your order at Bob Evans. My first table ever at a Bob Evans. It was uh, it was a very well dressed family who just got in from church, very well dressed. It was a Sunday afternoon, which is like the most busy day, and uh, they all ordered the lemonade, and they were all in their suits, Sunday best, you know. And I spilled lemonade all over two of them because I didn't hold the tray right. That's the that's how that day started, you know. Give me the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. That's Denny's. That's not Bob Evans. Bob Evans is the farm fresh breakfast, I think, with the two sausage and the eggs. Did you get fired for that? It was my first table. <laughs> no. They already invested weeks into keeping me on board. I did get a talking to, but about what? I, I guess I just held it wrong? I don't know.
Where do you start with this team? Let's go over the stats first. With the most shocking and pathetic stat of all, being that they did not win one dinner service. Over the stats first. With the most shocking and pathetic stat of all. I can't believe this hair is real. I feel like I've only seen it in, like, create a character modes. I've never seen a human being with this. It looks like a Lego piece. Spy Kids? <laughs> it's like a Hunger Games haircut. Fucking Lazy Town, yeah. <laughs> Just bolts on. It's a modular. Being that they did not win one dinner service. Okay, okay. Technically, they didn't lose the episode four service per se, as that was a good service for both teams. Uluru haircut? <laughs> See, that's funny to me. I don't know if chat gets it, but it's because it's a big rock in Australia. There you go. Just to help you get... Oh my god, my window's open. No joke, I think everyone should work in customer service. Shit teaches you to be much nicer. Nothing like 50 mad white women haggling during Black Friday out of toes when you're 16. I'm not kidding. The, 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 the wind just blew so hard. And I've been so loud tonight. I talked about cum bleach. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. 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 I'm so embarrassed. Holy fucking shit. The window's open because it was really nice today and it was raining. Oh my god, I'm so weird. Fuck. Oh my god. It was only open a little bit. It was only open a little bit. It wasn't all the way open. Oh my god, dude. Holy fuck. I'm humiliated. I hope nobody took their dogs out. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> now, now I'm all quiet. Whatever, the damage is done anyway. Teams, but still, how can you not beat the blue team one time? <laughs> so their challenge performance isn't much better, as the blue team beat them 7-3 uh. in that department as well. Meaning that the red team actually beat the blue team only three times combined between the challenges and dinner. I'm like embarrassed now. <laughs> Services. And yeah, just oh taking one look at the red team. There's going to be a post on Neighborhood about you. Yeah, it's going to be on Next Door. Dude, Next Door, yeah, people keep posting about teenagers, like, stabbing turtles and shit. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? And I don't know if they're serious, because Next Door is also like, they're like, oh my god, I saw a car go by my house the other day. Might be human trafficking. Have you ever been on Next Door? It's a weird social network. Suburban mania brain rot. Literally, yeah. It's weird. Team, you can understand why they went down as the worst team ever. As their skills and personality. They, they said that people were like smashing goose eggs. <laughs> like like uh, like little baby goose eggs. They said the teenagers were doing that. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? These weren't even close to average. Stacy, Jamie, and Maria were all prototypical early boots. <laughs> Maryland is a war zone. Bond cracked under the slightest bit of pressure. Fran was a Karen in the kitchen who somehow made it all the way to the final. <laughs> is that a <laughs> euphemism? The slightest That's bit funny of pressure. Like, Fran was a Karen in the kitchen who somehow made it all the way to the final eight, despite Liddy having one good service. And even then, she couldn't help but screw up. Second nominee and why? My second nominee is Nelka. It would be nice for y'all to let me know that, though. Don't just bring me up here and surprise me. No, Scott. No. Nelka. Yes, Chef. You had a bad service, but not as bad as these two back in line. Absolutely, Chef. And stand close to Fran. Speaking of Nelka, despite being one of the better chefs on the red team, she would go on to have the biggest meltdown in Hell's Kitchen history. Nelka. How so? Yes, chef. The lobster is raw. It's always raw. Uh, out. Get out. Adam. Yes, chef. Take your jacket off and f go. Oh, chef, don't say that, please. Please don't say that. Please don't say that. <laughs> don't say that, please. What? He already said it. What are you? Due to all this losing, Chef Ramsay was forced to send two men over to the red team to save. Don't him. say that, Chef. No, please. You're breaking my heart, Chef. 
Gordon, no! But both of them not only flopped as leaders, but were absolute assholes as well. This was not funny when I watched it. Well, was the first one to be switched was Scott, the definition of someone who is all bark but no bite. I just bust ass every day. I have a calmness about me during service, no Thanks, matter what Cypher. the stresses bring by far. I'm the best cook in this team, the best leader in this team. Dude, that water phone guy, if they ever did do like a live Hell's Kitchen, like a stage play, that water phone guy would be jacked. How do you play a water phone? I figured it was like a big violin. It would be like, like that. I can accomplish I can't take it anymore. With a bow? Yeah, yeah, it's like a cello. Oh, what is he going to say? What do you think he's going to say? <laughs> I think I know. I think I, I, could, I could guess it, I think. Got back in line. Yeah. Yeah, that was my guess. This team will Look it up. Shit goes crazy. Hold on. Water phone. Is it a big violin? Oh, uh huh. It, kind of. How the fuck do you play that? Now, uh, recently with the orcs, but because versus, that shit know, haunting. Best, can put fill it to the t that shit look like the crown in hereditary Stop. it's very simple just it up pretty good uh, that would be a funny bit never mind i had a funny idea the horse hair there is water wait really this that's horrific who figured out how to make these sounds? He poured it in the middle? Did he? Who invented this shit? Where's the water? This thing, kind of a that's a lollipop. Is band. That's not a lollipop, is it? And that's then probably a little a one sounds like this. Not much space here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought it was a lollipop. Wait, there's the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Damn, your shit has to drink like a plant. I think some of the corrosion. Die if I'm not here. Scott, give me a jacket. I certainly am the best. Can I not. just use a pot? It won't sound like that. A team, but when you're working with teammates that aren't as qualified to be there as you are, it makes it hard. And then there's Benjamin, a top tier chef in the show's history. Benjamin. Man, when he was switched to the red team, it was almost like he became a different person as he was. Why does it look like they're going to the pearly gates? See, I was going to make a joke, but actually, I wonder if that's a thematic thing because they're leaving hell. They're leaving hell and going into like limbo, purgatory, maybe heaven. Coney, can you watch this? This is the third time you sent me this. I'm not. It, you call it. I can't keep taking. You gotta call it. You have to call it. You can't keep telling me to watch a movie. D d d call it. Just banned? That's not how we do things. Call it. Heads? <sighs> you lucky duck. <laughs> Guys, it's the it's the rules of the universe. Actually, maybe we should watch his movie. He did win. Madison in a room. Pivot, pivot. This could get awkward. This movie looks pretty good. Makes it hard. And then there's Benjamin, a top tier chef in the show's history. Benjamin. Man, when he was switched to the red team, it, it like was that? almost like he became a different person, as he wasn't nearly as consistent after the switch, failed to lead them to any victories, and good God, out of nowhere, he became an absolute asshole. What do we want to do for sides? I love rice. I love mashed potatoes. I I'm not a big fan of serving rice in restaurants because it's like poor food. Damn. Rice is poor food. <laughs> there goes the water phone. <laughs> what was that? Who hit the fucking... Wow. Well, who, whose job was that? Is that the water phone guy? Is he just hitting every instrument? Rice with his fantastical music machine? Wow. 
I really do wonder if all the losing got to Benjamin's head, because I know season 7 and 17 were filmed nearly 10 years apart. This shit making me hungry. And a person can change dramatically in that time period, but when you compare Benjamin from season 7 to 17, it's literally like watching two different people. The obvious redeeming quality about this team is that it produced the winner of the season in Holly, but even then, she's regarded as one of the weaker winners, with most people agreeing that Jay deserved the win over her. So between the terrible stats... Is that casual misogyny again? I wonder if he was... Hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seeing through the... I wonder if he say, yeah, many people. Many people would say the guy should have won. Hmm, hmm, who are those people? <laughs> Jay did not deserve it. This commentator hates women. I'm kidding, by the way. I feel like this joke is too subtle, and I don't want people to think that I actually think this guy... Th this is... I feel like this joke is a little bit too subtle, so I'm going to go ahead... I'm not, I'm not serious. F? No way.